Hello, gamers. You're listening to the Short Pause Gaming Podcast. This is episode number 160. And welcome back to another edition of the Short Pause Gaming Podcast. I'm Brent Felsing, and joining me tonight, everybody, Frankie Ayler, Ben Boyce, Bender Holt, we're all back. Guys, how we doing? Pretty good. All right. <laughs> Frankie comes in, new haircut, shaved beard, and a whole new backdrop. What's going on, dude? Moving. Moving. Uh, the worst. Mm. Yeah, Frank, you haven't been around for a couple of weeks, but it's good to see you, you clean shave. I, mean, I miss the bit. I miss. I miss this. I don't know who you are. I know. I don't either. It's a good question, really. Yeah, how the move go? Everything go all right? Uh, for the most part, there's still a couple things left. Uh, the TV. Um, yeah. That's the main thing. But um, you know, we're staying with John's parents now, and her dad just got a 75 inch QLED. So. Ooh. How's that look? I don't know. I'm not going <laughs> to. I haven't hooked anything up to it yet. He said I can. So oh, did he say you could? Yep, Man, that's yep, awesome. It's going to be pretty fun. So, um, But yeah, outside of that, I mean, we're still kind of getting settled in. Um, <clears throat> just kind of been, you know, relying on the Switch to get me through, you know, mm. anything for gaming. So that's been mm-hmm. pretty cool. Have a nice big stack of games to play on that thing. So I'm not even upset. <laughs> yeah, there was a, there's a ton of great games that came out on the Switch now. There's plenty to play on it that's for sure we'll come back to you and talk about what you've been playing uh in a moment here but boys what's going on with you buddy nothing much man same old same old just uh grinding through another work week here Mm -hmm. and uh ready to talk some games with you guys yes sir and bender my man what's good um not too much man it's good to be back on the show Mm -hmm. Um, just trying to stay busy yeah, it's it's good to get, have you guys back. I get tired of car- carrying Boyce in the two man show, so I really appreciate you guys <laughs> being back. Always good to see you guys. Uh, I just started a vacation week, so I'm off from now until not this like next Monday, but the following Wednesday after Memorial Weekend. So I got a nice eleven days off. Really excited mm. to do nothing but play video games for the next couple of days. So, but um, let's talk about what we've been playing. I want to come back to you, Frankie? You have completed just a plethora of games since you've last been on. Uh, what have you knocked out, dude? Give us the rundown. All right, yeah. So uh, the big one was God of War. Mm. Dude, that game is amazing. I um, you know, I, I I started tempering my expectations, seeing all the perfect scores. I'm like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm sure it's great, but you know, but this one actually felt really lived up to all the praise that it got. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I had like Boyce mentioned when you guys were talking about before. I did like text him like, hey, you remember like. Yeah, you know, The Last of Us is the PS3 and the, the greatest game of that generation. This is God of War. Like, I fully agree with all the praise. So, mm. uh, but I loved every second of it. I'm, uh, I'm in the middle of trying to do trophy cleanup. That last Valkyrie is no joke, by the way. Oh, boy. I, I was laughing because uh, this, someone posted one of those memes that was like, you know, beat the God of War boss on, you know, normal difficulty. Can't beat the Valkyrie, the last Valkyrie on easy. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> So man, is it really that difficult even on easy? Yeah, the she has a really huge life bar and she does a lot of damage really fast. Wow. So she has I think she has a damn near one hit kill where she curb stomps your neck and just like twists your neck and walks away and tells you you're not worthy. I'm like, yep, yeah, you're not wrong. So <laughs> now I have a question for you. You are obviously a Dark Souls uh, professional. You played a lot of Dark Souls. Where would you rank that boss battle, that Valkyrie battle, against like some of the Dark Souls bosses you've gone against? Kind of belongs in there, I think. <laughs> really? Um, yeah, it, it definitely. Um, man, did at least in Dark Souls, I've been able to get through a couple bosses after a couple attempts. But this Valkyrie, man, like I can't. Every time really? I feel like I'm getting close, she just houses me. So <laughs> it's not fun. Mm. So, um, but I have that, and then I have just like a couple general things to clean up, some ravens to kill. I think um, the treasures. I gotta find a couple more of those. Mm-hmm. So that's really all I have left. Like I'm pretty damn near grabbing that platinum. So awesome, nice. So that game is amazing. I, I can't wait till you guys finish it. There's stuff I want to talk about. Oh, we um, were gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about a lot of God of War, dude. Yeah. So all I'm going to say is when you're when you're done with the game, go home and sleep. 
Make sure you do that. Go home and sleep. Go back to go his home. place. Go home and sleep. Okay. Just do that. Trust me. Okay. All right. <laughs> I can see myself not doing that or forgetting to do that. <laughs> yeah, or it's not, not something. Doing it, so I appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's not something that you're gonna think to do right away, but mm-hmm. it's well worth doing. Trust me. Uh, um, the other game, uh, a couple, I finished a couple other games. Omen Sight. I, uh, you know, we I did a stream the other day, but I wasn't sure if uh, if <laughs> the stream was working or not, so I didn't turn my mic on. Um, that game was really cool. Um, I really like Spearhead. Um, you know, I, I felt it has like a good stories, Path of Destiny's vibe to it. And, Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't quite play out as, you know, like the murder mystery I thought it would. Um, you know, you're kind of just going through that game and you're basically replaying the same, you know, day with different characters over and over again, discovering Mm -hmm. new clues as you find different routes to go. Um, the only problem I really had with the game was at times the camera just it's it's one of those fixed camera angles so at times it would be you know like fixed over here and you're fighting over here and just because of where the camera was if you end up under the camera it doesn't pan uh, so there were a lot of times I would like get ganged up on in a corner that I was trying to fight out of that I uh, I just couldn't get out of so hmm. um, just minor annoyances like that and that doesn't help with platforming because there's just times that it's hard to gauge you know if you had jumped up on this corner on this ledge to unlock a, a sealed door you go to jump back down the camera doesn't reset so oh. i usually overshoot the platform and die and have to go back in there <laughs> but um yeah that was a great game though uh review will probably be up on the site sometime this week so that's uh that's the latest i've gotten to review um and the other main game i finished was actually lightfall um i know bender's been playing this too but uh, that game is really cool. It's a great platformer on the Switch. It's coming to other platforms as well. I can't wait for boys to stream this. It's going to be great. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> really great. So uh, that I, I loved that game up until the last boss. The last boss sucks. Mm. It just, it, it, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of the times when I died in that game, I was like, okay, yeah, that was my fault. You know, I, I mistimed this, this jump or, you know, I didn't put a platform here or I, you know, jumped too high, didn't land and put down another mm. platform to reset. But the last boss is... um. In particular, he does these um, like giant waves of these um, little white ball things that mm-hmm. kind of sweep across the screen. So he does it to a point where you have to place a platform, jump up, and then jump up higher. So you you've placed your last platform and you're out of range. Mm-hmm. But there's also stuff falling from above. So there are a lot of times where I would be standing there waiting for those to pass and stuff would start falling above. And I'm, it, it, you know what I mean? Like I couldn't move to get out of the way. So I, that happened to me a lot. Um, but outside of that last boss fight, that game is really cool. There's some, there's actually some pretty good boss fights in there otherwise. Um, and the, like I said, the platform in that game is solid. It's amazing. Like creating your own platforms. Um, you know, you have these little gated off rooms you're trying to get to that basically fill in more story lore. So mm-hmm those are kind of tough getting in there there's like you know you're downhill you can't touch anything above so you're trying to trying to you know get down platform but then getting down is not usually the problem it's trying to get back up Mm -hmm. so it's it's a lot of stuff like that and i uh i talked myself out of double dipping just because i'm never gonna that's a platinum (laughs) if there's a platinum i'm never gonna get that so um and then um there's two other things i'm playing what i'll touch on when we get to the spotlight games uh the other one this is fun so the weekend that we had started moving, I um, I stopped at Walmart, you know, late at night. It's like four in the morning, and um, it was uh, the weekend, you know, right before the Battle Chasers release. So, looking around Walmart, and uh, I just glanced at the Switch games, see what they had, because they have a couple that are, uh, they have like Unbox Newbies Adventure, like they have a couple games that aren't widely available. So I'm kind of waiting for the price to drop to, before I pick them up, mm-hmm. and. Uh, <laughs> battle chasers out <laughs> now look i've i've been there before they've had games out like i tried to get ratchet and clank early they, they've put them a couple out before and i've never been able to you know you get to the register it's like oh it says i can't sell this you know it's not available yet but it's like ah screw it why not i'll try it <clears throat> i mean that week was already bad enough i was like worst case they'll just tell me to go away whatever so you know get it up to the front get to the register and you know, trying to ring it out. And just like, it's, they just don't want you to buy this game. I'm like, yeah, it's about how this week's been going. So, um, you know, so she was asking for like a price and they couldn't find one for where they put it. Cause it was platoon two, I think. So she's like, well, is there another skew for battle chasers? And the guy's like, yeah, we have an Xbox skew. That's twenty nine ninety nine. She's like, I'm just going <laughs> to give it to you for twenty nine ninety nine. I was like, all right. I mean, <laughs> that's cool. So 
yeah, I uh, I, I got out of the store with, with a copy of Battle Chases early, so I uh, I've been messing around with that on the Switch. I am so happy to be back into that game. I love Battle Chasers. Absolutely Dude, love it. Why can't my Walmart have incompetent employees that'll just be like, oh, here, I'll just scan this SKU over here for a game that's been <laughs> out for a year and get it cheaper? That's, wow, that's awesome. That's yep. awesome. So yep. it runs really good on the Switch? Yeah. Um, I have noticed a little bit of uh, slowdowns getting into the first dungeon, the Iron Outpost. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like a couple frame rate hitches here and there, but not during combat. It's just kind of running around. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've been reading people who have crashing issues and whatnot, but I have fortunately this time around haven't had any problems, but mm-hmm. it's really cool to see. They made a lot of changes to that game since I uh, did that write up. So I do want to finish that and actually go back and do a proper review now that, you know, that game was, it, there's a lot of like, you know, before like they had gear that was, you know, locked out by your level that's gone. So anything mm-hmm. you find, you can equip. <clears throat> so um, now did they implement those changes to the PS4 and Xbox one versions? Yes. Okay. Yes. So. Yeah, all those versions have all these updates. So the Switch version launched as like the most complete physical version. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm fine with that. I uh, like I said, I love that game. So I I've been uh, playing Devil and that when I can. Um, you know, obviously the Banner Saga is out on the Switch now, so I have that too. So I'm just excited. There's a lot of great stuff hitting on the Switch that I'm uh, ready to play. Probably finish Gerald Deluxe on there soon too. Yeah, I firmly believe that 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 Battle Chasers and Banner Saga are going to be so perfect on the Switch. Like absolutely perfect on the Switch. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to playing that. Um, you know, I actually picked up Banner Saga and I played a little bit of it, and it is really good on the Switch. So, uh, just two games that are that are just going to be right at home and have those on the go and be able to play through those games that I've been wanting to play. I just don't have time to play them at home. So, uh, mm-hmm. perfect, perfect for the go on the Switch. So, oh, yeah. well, that's good, man. It's, I'm glad to hear you've been able to. You know, with if everything as crazy as everything's been, you've been able to get you stick to your gaming and get some gaming in. And I'm sure that mm-hmm. helps kind of deal with the stress of moving, moving sucks i know that and uh you know having done it last year i'm sure it's nice to be able to just hop onto the switch and just kind of escape that bull all that bullshit that comes with moving so yeah uh, the other the other cool thing was bender and i did our monster hunter stream last wednesday uh i wasn't sure when our next one would be i didn't know if you know i'd be able to get set up again right away but when we were doing that stream i know bender unlocked a couple trophies that he's been chasing and i i actually got my trophy for my 500 (laughs) hunts so that was cool 500 hunts Yep, one one Beasley. step closer to the platinum. Most impressive, my friend. Well, Benner, <laughs> let's uh, let's head to you next, man. What have you been playing? Um, I also have been playing Let Night uh, Lightfall, <clears throat> which I've been, I've been enjoying quite a bit. Um, and I agree with everything Frankie said about the final boss. I actually haven't beat the final boss yet because every time I've tried, I've just keep getting you know killed by one cheap death or another. <laughs> Um, but other than that, it's an awesome game. I, I, I really like the soundtrack and the platforming and the, all the extra little secrets that you can find and stuff like that is mm-hmm. really, really good. Um, uh, and Frankie and I finally ran through the, the war mine campaign with destiny two, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, which is cool. Uh, it, we didn't get to do it right away. We didn't do it at launch. We had stuff that was com- kept coming up, so we weren't able to do it, but, um, we finally were able to jump in and, and play through that, and I really enjoyed it. It was short, but I thought it was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought this, the story was decent, but the you know the missions were really cool, and the, the final boss battle was, was really cool and fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that was very enjoyable, so I'll be looking forward to getting in there and kind of exploring Mars a little more and you know all that stuff, so checking out some of the other adventures and everything, so mm-hmm. that's been pretty good. Um and other than that, just like lots of Monster Hunter, <laughs> <laughs> still still playing that, trying to get that platinum, and you know having fun. And by the way, you were you guys were talking about Monster Hunter Ultimate or whatever that one that's coming for the Switch. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. Generations Ultimate. Yeah, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. And you were like, oh, I don't know who would play that. Um, we're both pretty excited about it, Frankie and I. Um, no, I mean, and, and I don't, I don't think that you guys won't be excited about it. I'm just gonna be curious to see how what you guys think of it after playing Monster Hunter World for so long. That's what I'm gonna want to hear because you mm. even said so yourself, but Bender before those are, Monster Hunter games are very, very, I won't say archaic, but not nearly as streamlined and as fluid as what we have now with Monster Hunter Worlds. That's what I want to see. That's what I'm gonna be curious about. I'm sure you guys are excited, but I know, I know there's a lot of people that are excited about it. But I'm gonna be curious to see if you jump into that and be like. I would just rather rather play Monster Hunter Worlds. That's what I'm going to be curious to see. 
I'm yeah. a little concerned about that because it does, you know, it does have, you know, Monster Hunter World did have a lot of systems that they streamlined and made things a lot more user friendly. Mm-hmm. But I'm still excited about it because one, I'll have a Monster Hunter game that I can play on the go, mm-hmm. which last time was on the 3DS. I wasn't into the series as I like I am now mm-hmm. back then. So now that I've been introduced to it and really been drawn into the Monster Hunter series in, in World, um, I think I'll be more apt to to enjoy this one on the mm-hmm. Switch. And then the other reason I'm excited about it is because this one, from what I've heard, has like two or three times more monsters than than Monster Hunter World does. Mm-hmm. Monster Hunter World <laughs> only has like 30, 35 different monsters or something. This one's got like 60 or 90. I forget how many, but it's a lot. A lot more variety of, of large monsters to hunt. So I think that's going to be cool to be able to get in there, you know, even if there's no voice chat, I mean, Frankie and I can figure something out, mm-hmm. voice chat over Discord or something, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're only going to be playing together when we're at home, I'm sure. But um, it'll still be it'll still be cool to have it on the go and, mm-hmm. and enjoy it and everything. I, I think it'll be good, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll definitely report back once that game comes out and and we get some time with it. But I'm mm-hmm. looking forward to it. I'm off that week. Oh man, Ooh, there nice. we go. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Cool. Good to hear. Uh, boys, let's come over to you, man. Let's talk about the Tuesday Night Indie Spotlight, because we had another awesome game, boys, that uh, we got to see the dark side of boys a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we uh, streamed <clears throat> streamed Goner on the Tuesday Night Indie Spotlight. <laughs> so we had a, a plethora of interesting titles come come out this week in the independent space. Franklin streamed Omen site earlier in the week, so that took that one off the play. was like, all right. So then you and I were like, oh, Wizard of Legend looks awesome. Let's grab this. Let's fire it up on the spotlight. We'll do a little co-op stream. Local co-op only. Moved that off the table. Uh, so a- After we bought the game. After, after we, bought the, we game. bought the game, we find out local co-op. Yeah. We are we are in, endeavoring to get a Wizard of Legend <laughs> share play video up yes. on the site at some point in the near future here. So be on the lookout for that. So uh, moving down the line, that brought us to Goner which was uh, another game I was interested in. I always thought it looked really cool on the Switch. Fired it up on the Indie Spotlight this week. And, uh, yeah, the game's uh, extremely difficult. Um, we uh, It's it's weird as hell, too. It's <laughs> it's really an obtuse game, which is a a part of video game design that's become uh, seemingly more and more prevalent the last few years, and it's something that I'm not personally a fan of. Like, I don't like these games that don't give you any kind of direction at all, and you're just trying to figure stuff out, and you're just ramming your head into the wall. Uh, Goner doesn't even have any text. It's just pictures. Mm-hmm. So you're you're kind of just moving through these levels, and you're like, okay, well, I think that this maybe does this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as we moved along in the stream, you know, for the hour or so that we played, you know, I discovered how a few things worked and, and you know, uh, started to understand the mechanics a little bit. But there was still a lot of stuff I didn't understand. Didn't understand what my currency did. I didn't understand exactly what the difference was between trying again and visiting death. And there's like, oh, there's all these weird things in the game that the game never explains in any way, shape, or form, and you're just kind of left to your devices to figure it out. And I never figured anything out. So, um, <laughs> yeah, but I've uh, I've played a few of those kind of games on the spotlight, and I just I just don't like it. Mm-hmm. It's uh, to me, it's just it's a flaw in the design if you choose to go this route and your game doesn't properly inform you how to how to, how its mechanics work mm-hmm. like if 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 you choose to go this route if you choose to have this kind of game where you figure things out yourself and the game is not designed in a way that that encourages that discovery then i i, I don't like that mm-hmm. um but that, that being said gone is still a fun game like it feels good to play it's a you know it's a it's a tough action platformer it's got roguelike elements so it it is it is frustrating to um to get to these levels and then go all the way back to the beginning. Um, and I couldn't figure out in this game like if there was any kind of progression or, or any anything along those lines. Like I, It didn't seem like any of my progression was saving or I wasn't building anything up with my character, really. Um, you know, I, I ran into a few different items over the course of, of the stream, and you know, those seemed like they stuck around for me to use in, in some capacity. But outside of that, couldn't really figure out if there was any type of level of progression or, or progress mm-hmm. that you make in this game in terms of like a save state or, or whatnot. But the the actual act of uh, the jumping is a, is a little bit weird in this game too because you jump 
and then when you when you tap jump again it creates a platform underneath you and then mm -hmm. after that platform appears then it springs you upward so instead of the game just having a normal like double jump it's this weird platforming thing and it feels a little bit strange because you hit jump and they hit jump again then there's this brief delay as you create a platform and then the platform shoots you off so it's it's a it's a little bit of a uh, it takes some getting used to definitely mm -hmm. um but yeah, but the the act of like shooting the guns, fighting the enemies, like it feels good. The soundtrack is very is very dark and and moody and and really really good, from what I heard in the game. Um, it's extremely bizarre. Like I said, I mean, you're this you're this agent of death who's trying to make this like whale that's your friend like happy. So you're like going through these <laughs> levels and and trying to find some item or kill some enemies. Couldn't really decipher heads or tails of, of what the story was about. But uh, if if you like uh, difficult roguelike action platformers that are really bizarre with a, like a dark soundtrack, then give Goner a shot. But I think uh, a lot of people are going to be frustrated by this game, and it's 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 going to be a, a niche title um, for that's going to appeal to a, a small group of people when all is said and done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, watching you play, I mean, it's it's definitely a trippy design. It's a trippy game. Yeah. Uh, but, man, I was just, you know, about halfway through, that's when I was like, man, I, I wish I had a sensor button just in case because I could, <laughs> I could sense your temperature was rising and uh, you were becoming more frustrated. And I swear I wasn't laughing at you. I was laughing <laughs> – with you sort of like in a way because oh, you know, yeah yeah because i support you 100 percent. i yeah, love when you play uh, these difficult games I, I think it's awesome yeah i would think <laughs> no, think nothing less i was laughing at you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was too i kept um, getting to that one like boss room and then yes. I just dying that, that boss room sucked yeah, once you figured out, the, once you had that fin uh, pack where you could, like, fire, like, multi, like, really, really fast, that's mm -hmm. how you were able to clear through that room pretty good, pretty quick, too, so. Yeah. <laughs> then, I, like, you got to the next area, you're like, finally, I made it, and you just kept falling in pits, and I was like, <laughs> man, he's got he's to wrap this up. Yeah, and then you get, yeah, you get to the next level, and in nowhere in the first area are there any, like, pits, mm -hmm. and the, the weird thing that this game does is it, it kind of draws the mm -hmm. environment around you as you go through the stages. So when I get to this next area, I'm expecting the environment to draw around me like it has been, but I just, it didn't draw anything. I just fell into a pit. <laughs> so I was like, what the hell, man? So then it's it's all the way back to the beginning, and you're doing it all over again, and just like, are you kidding me? Yeah. That was, that was garbage. That's a mean game, dude. That's a real mean game. But yeah, no, yeah, it was entertaining to watch, and uh, you know, it's it, I've played it on the Switch. It is a very difficult game. Uh, but kudos to you to uh, making it through a, yet another difficult Tuesday night indie spotlight. <laughs> uh, what else have you been playing? Just Destiny Two, man. So mm -hmm. just going, uh, going hard in Destiny Two. Uh, well, as, as much as I can, I haven't been able to play it. Uh, man, I, I think I got one day in this week, the mm -hmm. day that we played. That's mm -hmm. pretty, pretty much been it. It's been a busy week. Um, I, I haven't even got the Frankie's review yet, which I've been trying to review for four days or uh, edit for four days now. So hopefully I'll, I'll get to do that tomorrow. But uh, yeah, just uh, just been playing Destiny two, trying to grind the power levels, get ready for Escalation Protocol and mm -hmm. uh, some of the uh, the other end game activities like uh, Nightfall, that kind of stuff that we can the Prestige Nightfall that we can dig our teeth into. Um, yeah, but we, uh, we had a good night on, on Wednesday. It was a lot of fun. We hopped into the, uh, competitive playlist as well. Yeah. Franklin was there mm -hmm. with us. That's um, fun. yeah, but, uh, the Crucible is, is awesome right now. I mean, it's, it's really a lot of fun with the competitive and the quick play. You get two distinctly different experiences and with the Crucible ranking system now, um, and the rewards that are available, like it, it's, it's a lot of fun to get in there and, and grind those levels and try to get your, uh, get your reward status up. But yeah, competitive when you're in there with like a group of people and you're communicating and trying to, um, you know, work your way through these levels is as tactical as possible. It's, it's a ton of fun, man. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it, there's really nothing out there that's, that's as intense as a uh, as a competitive Destiny two match right now with mm -hmm. people that are like going at each other's <clears> throats and you're like going blow for blow. It's uh yeah it's it's good man and I can't wait to continue to play through that and try to get our hands on that Redrick's as Claymore. Mm -hmm. Absolutely yeah that was a lot of fun you know getting me, uh, you Franklin and um, Dark Shadow Wolf and going in there we we, we lost a couple early. Yeah. Uh, but once we got it, because we played on two maps we hadn't even played on before. We n yeah. none of us had seen those first two maps, mm -hmm. uh, so we had to, we didn't, we weren't too familiar with our surroundings. But once we got to like the next two maps that we knew, we uh, we actually held our own pretty good. We dominated one group like really really bad, 
And then uh, the next one was a tight match that we went, came down to the end. So, I mean, it was mm-hmm. it was really, really fun playing with you guys. And, yeah, like you said, man, competitive is where I like to play. No tracker. Uh, so you got to really communicate. So that was really a lot of fun that way. So, uh, yeah. But other than that, yeah, Destiny 2, uh, I've been playing through a game, um, Smoke and Sacrifice, working my way through that. I'll be doing a review for that game. Uh, that'll be out on May. Uh, the review should be up on May 30th. I believe the game comes out on the 31st. 31st, yeah. So, so, um, but we will also feature it on the Tuesday Night Indie Spotlight, the 29th, because there is no embargo on videos. So, or there is an embargo that raises on the 29th or lifts on the 29th. So I'll be able to stream it for the Tuesday Night Indie Spotlight. So yes. we'll talk about that a little bit more then, but yeah, you can expect our review, uh, closer to launch. So, um, yeah, I'm other than that, very excited no. about that game. Sorry. I'm just, no, that no. game looks really cool. Yep. Yep. And uh, I can't wait to talk about it more, so uh, make sure you stay tuned to shortpause.com and also sub- subscribe to our YouTube channel as we will have a Tuesday night in the spotlight. All right, let's get into spotlight titles. Franklin, what are the big games coming out this week? All right, so this week's cool because as a, you know, we have something coming out exclusively on all three major platforms this week. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to start with the PlayStation one coming out this week, and that is Detroit Become Human. Mm-hmm. This, of course, the latest from Quantic Dream. Um, I know the demo's out. I know, Boyce, you've refrained, that, refrained from playing the demo because you're going to play the damn game when it comes out. You don't need a demo to sway you. Um, mm-hmm. Brent, did you check the demo out or not? Nah? I did not. I didn't even touch it. No? Me either? Mm-mm. Bender? Demo? No? No, me neither. Cool. So, um, you know, this is a game we've talked uh, we've talked a lot about in the past. Um I'm not sure. I just want to you know, kind of go on the horn real quick, see where you guys are. Um, boys, obviously, I know you know you, you skipped on the demo. You're a big mm-hmm. fan of Quantic Dream's other games. Obviously, beyond currently a PlayStation Plus game, if you guys want to get familiar with uh, Quantic Dream's type of game. But, uh, boys, where are you at on Detroit? Very excited for Detroit, man. You know, we, we've been talking about it on the show for the past few months as, uh, you know, more and more you know stuff has been coming out about it. You know, we've seen that. And, you know, what I mentioned before when we were talking about that demo is we've seen that scene several times now. And every time I've seen that scene, I've seen it play out in different ways, which is really cool. And it kind of gives us a brief glimpse into the just the multiple possibilities that are going to be available with Detroit Become Human. So I'm excited about I, I really like the, the concept of this story, like just the whole idea of this kind of Android revolution and, and the things that are, are going on in this game. Really, really interesting to me. I, I love the kind of sci-fi stuff that it's dealing with here. The game looks absolutely drop dead gorgeous. I mean, the, the, the visual fidelity in this game is is quite stunning when you when you watch it in motion and just uh you know if if the game plays out the way that we've seen some of the scenes play out it looks incredibly polished it looks uh you know just a just a, an an immense amount of of story possibilities available and your decisions look like they're going to have some real weight in this game so uh incredibly excited about Detroit become human uh, I love the actors that are involved in it as well like they they have some some really really strong talent involved in this game all the way around so um really excited for this one can't wait to get my hands on it um don't know if i'll be able to to start it this this particular week but i do uh i will be picking it up and and firing it up as soon as i can awesome uh how about you bender i don't know if uh, this game looks right at the alley or not um you know of course you have like all these different investigations all this different stuff you can do to change the course of the story i know you get into stuff like that so where are you at with detroit uh, I'm definitely interested in this game. Um, I do want to pick it up at some point. I don't know if I'll have the finances to pick it up right away, but I'm definitely uh, interested in, in checking it out. Um, it's it's a game that I've been intrigued by since it was first announced. Um, I do like the the idea of having branching paths and different endings and you know choices that that matter. And you know I, I like the characters from what I've seen. So. All the stuff, it seems really intriguing to me, so I'm, I'm definitely going to check out Detroit at some point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How about you, Brent? This, uh, this Again, for you, this looks like something I could totally see you getting into. Um, mm-hmm. Are you picking this up on Friday? I absolutely loved Heavy Rain. 
Uh, I really love the storytelling. I love the way that uh, uh, that, th- that this developer works. It, is, it was a really good game. I am definitely interested in Detroit Become Human. However, this week, there is just way too much going on. I have plans to finish three other games this week. I have three games I have to beat, plus Iron Banner is this week. So it's very difficult for me to jump into something like uh, Detroit Become Human. This is going to be a June title for me. This will be something I'll hop into uh, later in June. But this week, I'm just focusing on God of War. Uh, Far Cry 5 and Kingdom Come Deliverance. I I know I'm deep into all of those. I'm going to try to... I'm going to have a lot of free time this week, so I'm going to really work on hammering those ones out because I have to get those done. Uh, And, you know, with Iron Banner mixed in at night, it's going to be very difficult to even jump into Detroit Become Human. And that's not a – Detroit Become Human is such a strong narrative game that that's not something I want to jump into and then go play other stuff and come back to. You want to play through as much as that as you can in, you know, in in big amounts of time and get through the game as quickly as possible so you have all the narrative in your mind still. So uh, not right now. I'm sure I'll I'll hear boys or one of you guys talk about it, but uh, this will probably be a June title for me. Gotcha. I'm, I'm sort of with Bender, uh, just kind of a little financially constrained now with the move. So, plus, I, you know, with how everything's set up right now, I'm not even sure when I'm going to be able to get to it. Mm-hmm. So, it's something I'm very interested in. I just don't know when I'm going to pick it up. Hopefully, mm-hmm. before my Gamers Club expires, that would be preferable. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> but, um, That's weak. Yeah. So, uh, look for that on the PS4 on Friday, the 25th. Mm hmm. Uh, so the second title I want to touch on, uh, this is actually available kind of already uh, if you bought the Ultimate Edition and on Xbox and, of course, the State of Decay 2. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this one's kind of got a lot of mixed reviews, um, you know, a lot of a uh, lot of things pointing to bugs, you know, crashes, all kinds of just weird stuff that you would think after five years of development would have been ironed out. But um, I think there's like a six gig day one patch. Mm. So... <laughs> Um, but anyways, uh, you know, despite despite all that, you know, some people playing it are having a lot of fun with it. A lot of comparisons to the first game, a lot of like heavy, you know, sim management mostly. But uh, Brendan, I know you snagged an Ultimate Edition. Um, I have mine. I just have to <laughs> I got to download it and saw it. So when I get mm-hmm. my Xbox back up on online, I'll uh, get into that. But uh, what, what are your uh, impressions of the game so far? You know, when I played the first one, I didn't care for it and I wasn't too what wasn't too sure what to expect from this one um when i first fired it up i was playing it on uh pc because that's all i wanted to play it at first because I, I you know i heard the high frame rate was there i was like okay well, i want to check this out and um immediately you know i have into the story I'm, as i get to this new house that you set up with this community of people that you meet at the beginning um i had a, a, a bug where i was trying to turn in some stuff to kind of progress the the story and it wouldn't let me turn anything in and i was trying for about 20 minutes i was like dude what the hell so I stopped the game, I closed the game, and I came back in. And when I came back in, it had progressed the story as if I turned the thing in. And I was like, oh, well, I didn't. But <laughs> So uh, I don't know what, what happened with that. But, um, you know, like, look, even on PC, this isn't, it's, this isn't a looker, okay? This isn't a beautiful-looking game. Uh, it's rough. Uh, but there's just – there is something charming about – the whole um, the sim portion of it, how you're managing, you know, your resources. You got to do these runs where you go out to these areas, find resources, either whether it's food, ammo, gas, or fuel that you need for other items at your at your house. You know, filling up cars to go on these runs, and all this jazz. I mean, there there are some cool ideas here. Um, I haven't played it cooperatively at all. Um, the game does not tell you a lot about what you need to do. The 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 the, the management portion of it, it can be uh, overwhelming at first. Um, But overall, you know, I I, I like what it's trying to do. And then, you know, when I went and played it on the Xbox One, the Xbox One X, uh, obviously it's the frame rate is is at 30, you know, and and, and there's this weird blur effect when you turn and move around. It looks really strange when you play it on the on the Xbox One X compared to PC. So right now it's a game that I'm glad that it has Xbox play anywhere. I'm really glad it has that because I can play it on PC while they try to iron out whatever is going on with the Xbox One X. I'm not saying it's unplayable. It's just in terms of like watching it in motion, I'd much rather play the PC version right now. Uh, but I mean, it's it's functional. It works. It plays fine. It's just got this weird blur effect when you're turning. Like it's a f- almost like a full screen blur effect. Uh, when you're moving around, so that 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 part of it is a little weird. But um, you know, I don't I don't know if this game. I don't think it's terrible. Uh, I'm still trying to get my head around the management portion. That's never been a strong suit of mine on these types of games where there's a lot of sim management. But I'm trying to give it a fair shake. I'm really trying to see if there's something there that I can you know that speaks to me and that I can kind of build on and, and enjoy the game that way. So uh, there are some cool elements to it, but I mean, like I said, the, the weaknesses so far 
It's not a beautiful looking game. The voice acting is in some areas is just terrible. And, uh, you know, there's been a couple of bugs, a little hiccups here and there, but nothing. I've had any crashes or anything like that. Just one strange thing where I tried turning something in and it wouldn't let me. I, I turned the game off, come back in and it acted like I had already turned it in. So it's whatever. But early on, I think I'm about five hours in. I'm just running a lot of stuff. Again, the game doesn't tell you, give you a whole lot of direction of stuff you have to do. You kind of figure stuff out on your own. Uh, but you know, and again, that's just something where I, that's more of a me thing. I got to figure out how to play this game. Uh, I know there's people that have played State of Decay. They know this type of game inside now. They're obviously much better than I am. But I'm, I'm trying. I'm giving it a fair shake. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna play through it a little bit more and see where it takes me. Cool. Yeah. I um. A lot of the reviews I've read, I don't know if I'm gonna like this game. Mm-hmm. I really didn't like the first one, but I also went into the first one expecting more of an emphasis on you know killing zombies because that was the thing at the time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, having an idea of what to expect this time around and, you know, like I've mentioned before, over over the past couple of years, I've kind of gotten more into like strategy games and, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I think there's maybe something in there that I'm going to end up liking. At least I'm hoping so. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's it, there's cool things that you got to do. There's like hordes. Of, there's like these little hordes of zombies. There's like different types of zombies. Some are called screamers. Uh, that when they scream, other zombies will show up. So when you go to these areas where there's like these infestations, it'll tell you how many zombies are there that you have to kill to cl- to clear out the infestation. It'll say one of them's a screamer. So like you know, at first I kept going in and like. I'd kill a few, but the screamer would sound off, and I'd have to run away because I don't want to – because there's permadeath. You lose somebody in your crew, they're gone forever. And I was like, I'm not losing anybody. Uh, but then I um, and I end up losing somebody, and I was really pissed about it. But um, one of my characters, I got like a rifle, and I found a, uh, a suppressor. So I put it on. I was like, oh, cool. So now what I do is I go to these infestation areas, and I pull, And usually at night it's better because some of these zombies have like glowing eyes, different colors, and you can kind of differentiate what's what, like which one's a screamer and which one's like a regular infestation um, zombie. And like I'll sit outside at night, and I'll look through this. I'll zoom down the scope or whatever. You get pulls in closer over your shoulder, and I'll look for the screamer, shoot that one first with a silenced weapon, and then just start picking out the rest of the crew. I don't even have to go inside. So I mean, there is some cool elements here, some strategy involved, and I really like how every character has like different stats, like weapons, cardio. Uh, all this stuff and as you do your, your fighting ability and as you rank up you know once you hit 10 stars it'll say hey look you can unlock a perk for this character like when you go to uh, shooting once you hit 10 stars it'll say okay do you want to be better with long range weapons or do you want to have less recoil for short close close quarter or stuff so you can rank up characters and each one has like a different perk that unlocks when you rank it up so there's some cool RPG elements there you can get the character to uh, play to your style and there's some cool melee abilities as well that I really like so like I said the game has its strengths there are some cool areas it's just it's a rough game I mean I'm not gonna lie to you this it's a rough game but there's enough there where it's keeping me interested so far. I just have to, again, it's the whole learning of it. It can be a very overwhelming game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking forward to hopefully this week we can hop in, try out co-op. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See how that is. I know, uh, you know, people are saying you're not going to lose any people. There's survivors. You kind of take your eye and that's it. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. So that's State of Decay 2. That is available now if you get the Ultimate Edition um, out on Tuesday for everybody else. Mm-hmm. Up next, uh, this is actually a game that I'm currently working on for review. This will be coming out on the Switch on Tuesday. That is, of course, Runner 3. Um, mm-hmm. I fell in love with this series at Runner 2. That was one of the games that came out with one of the uh, one of the PlayStation promotions that summer. So I had picked it up. It was on sale. I was like, ah, you know, I've always, always heard these games are really cool. So uh, I, I played a lot of Runner 2. Never beat the game, of course. I, I started getting, you know, it's one of those games that you, you get 100% completion and like at the end of the level, because this one has the same thing, you 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 fire commander video out of a cannon into <laughs> like a giant um um like dartboard. Mm-hmm. So you know, like I was trying to go through there and get you know perfect scores for each level. So that was always like the thing that consumed me with these games. Um, and the soundtrack too, like the soundtrack for Runner Two is probably one of my favorite game soundtracks. Uh, my mm-hmm. favorite, of course, being Wet Fart Cheese Funk. It's a great track. <laughs> It's been featured on JD's podcast. Yeah, it's a classy track. It really is. Anyways, <laughs> um, so far I've uh, I've finished the first world, which is kind of a, th- a food themed world. I f- I think it's even called Food World, if I'm not mistaken. But so far, I'm not really sure if I'm liking it or not. Um, you know, this one being the third game, kind of starts experimenting with some 3D stuff, mm-hmm. um, which I think maybe the last one did a little bit of, but it wasn't you know like full blown camera pans and all this stuff that you know is in runner three from what i remember um but i've been mostly been playing it in handheld mode on the switch Mm -hmm. and 
uh, there's just been a couple levels where I think it's supposed to be some kind of fog effect or something, but you know the the, the image looks kind of washed out, mm. and you know it's it's a very colorful game. So there's yeah, times, I was gonna say the trailer looks beautiful. Yeah, it is. A, I'm not gonna you know make any assumptions here, but it's you know like somebody who's on some drugs maybe designed some of these creatures. <laughs> in yeah, the background. I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just there's you know certain enemies kind of you know on a small screen with, you know, a washed out image look like, um, you know, the collectibles, which are these little boom boxes. Mm-hmm. Um, I love grabbing those cause it does like a little ultra sound. So that was, <laughs> that's, those are always fun to get, but, um, I've had just a lot of frustrating moments where, you know, I, I die, you know, cause I'm like, Oh, there's one of those. Oh crap. It's not. It's one of the guys I got a duck under. So, <laughs> Uh, it's just, parts of it have just driven me crazy. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, it's it does a lot of 3D stuff. Um, there's portions where you're not necessarily running. Uh, you know, you'll jump in like a mine cart and it's going really fast uphill. But, you know, you're passing all the columns for this thing. So there's enemies like right around the corners. And it just man, it's it's very difficult to adjust to on on the switch screen. Unfortunately, it's the first time that the joy cons have kind of been driving me crazy. Just because mm-hmm. I feel like I've had a proper D-pad because it's just, I don't know. I don't even know if that's a thing to blame. I'm probably just looking for something to blame, honestly. But, uh, man, just at times that game gets really unnecessarily frustrating. But um, outside of that, <clears throat> there's um if you collect these uh, VHS tapes, it unlocks like these retro episodes. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how many there are. I think there's four or five. But these are like entire other worlds. So there's, you know, ten stages or so in each of these. And it's cool because they're kind of themed after like a they have like a Looney Tunes aesthetic to them, <laughs> so they kind of have like this cartoony like film grain and everything. But those play more as like a traditional platformer type of game. But uh, yeah, so those you know those are a little more um, kind of my speed, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, so going through those, you know, you, you get double jump, you get your little kick attack, um, and and you're just trying to grab these these coins and get through as fast as you can. So those have been a lot of fun. I've actually really enjoyed um, messing around with those. Those get very challenging as you uh, progress through them. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I mean that game. Uh, you know, those games have a lot of stuff to do, and they're you know, if you're a completionist, you're going to be running through a lot of these levels multiple times, trying to not only collect all of the the gold bars, but also get the bullseye at the end of the level. So, um, it, it, also this one, uh, there's multiple paths you can take. So mm-hmm. if you if you tap one of the um, mm-hmm. Um, bumpers on the switch it'll you know you have like a fork and you can go a different way Mm -hmm. Um, so as you play through the game you unlock more abilities you know double jump you have your slide you have the kick so as you unlock those you can go back and do these um like gem run levels there's 25 Mm -hmm. gems for you to collect and uh there's you know different items like stickers you have different characters that you get quests for that you have to collect items to go give to them to unlock them so there's there's a lot to that game. I'm just not sure how much of it I'm gonna you know want to play. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm tempted to try it out on the TV and see if that helps having you know a bigger picture to work with. Mm-hmm. But so far, handheld mode has kind of yielded some frustrating moments. Um, that, mm-hmm. there was a level that took me a good you know 25 tries to get through because wow. you know you get one checkpoint and some of these there's a lot of stuff to do to get to that first checkpoint. So a lot of a lot of frustrating moments with that. But um. Outside of that, uh, there's I did one. There's a boss fight at the end of the first world. Which I don't mm. remember there being boss fights before. I could be totally wrong, but um, that was really cool. Actually, the the boss fight was was really neat. Um, it's like the Sausage King or something stupid, <laughs> but the Sausage King of Chicago, <laughs> Abe Froman. Yeah, yeah. So, but no, that 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 has actually uh, that fight was actually really really cool. So thankfully they checkpoint you. Um, you know, it's one of those hit them hit them three times and it'll checkpoint you. So uh, that was uh. I, I did enjoy that part a lot, so I'm looking forward to at least getting to those. I'm not sure how many worlds there are uh, after you finish one. You know, clouds lift because you're the the map this time around is a globe, so mm-hmm. it looks like there's at least two more areas, but I'm not totally sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I'll probably get around to get you know hopefully finishing that this week if I don't snap my switch in half and uh, have a review <laughs> up at some point for that. Um, but Ben, I want to come to you actually because I know you um, also enjoy the runner games. Uh, you know, this of course launching first on the Switch. Are you at all interested in Runner Three? Um, <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> pending on your <laughs> your uh, review. <laughs> if uh, <clears throat> if you feel like it's get it gets better by the end, and you feel like it's worth it, then I might pick it up. If not, then I'm okay with passing on it. But uh, the the previous Runner games that I've that I've played of of them um, are were pretty good. You know, I haven't played all all the way through any of them, but um, 
they they were pretty fun from what I have played. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, that'll be available on the Switch on Tuesday. I think there's a discount for pre-ordering, so it's twenty five forty nine. If you get it digitally, or you can get the Nicalis release on a uh, on, on a cartridge if you're so inclined for forty bucks. Mm. So, um, but yeah. Uh, so up next, uh, I want to touch on Dark Souls Remastered. Uh, this will be coming to PlayStation Four and Xbox One this week. Nintendo Switch sometime down the road, which mm-hmm. is honestly probably for the better because I might actually end up playing that on Switch at some point. We'll see. Um, you know, so I know you know. Just gonna come, you know. Just come to you real quick, Brent. I know, uh, you know, you've messed with some of the Souls games before. Are you interested in going back to the first one? You know, I, I've I've never actually beaten a Souls game, and that's shocking to nobody. But um, I am going to pick this up at some point, and I am going to make an honest effort. Not like I'm not gonna like binge through them, but I would like to start through the Dark Souls games from the beginning, and eventually over time just get to it because it's a game where it's extremely frustrating if you're not experienced with those types of games. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I've played them, but I'm not like really, really, really good at them. So I don't mind like taking a Dark Souls game and going, like, all right, look, I'll try to get through this one area, get to the boss. If I get killed, fine, I'll take a break, come back to a couple days later, and just kind of like just work my way through it slowly. Uh, I am interested to see this game because it's going to run at 60 frames. Uh, and that and that combat, you know, you played it with uh, the Surge. When mm-hmm. you turn it over to 60 frames, you get the high frame rate. It makes those games much more enjoyable combat-wise. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. I'm not saying Dark Souls 3 is, is terrible at 30 frames. It's not. It's a great game. It reviewed very, very well. People love it. I'm just saying at 60 frames, it just looks better. Uh, you know, and especially with the art style of a Dark Souls game, it just looks a lot better and probably feels better in combat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you want that high frame rate with with that combat, especially. Mm-hmm. So, especially getting into some of those um, massive boss fights, you're going to be dodging a lot. You want that, you know, immediate response. So, mm-hmm. uh, I'm looking forward to that. That'll be available again on Friday on PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, another title coming out this week that looks really cool is Pixel Junk Monsters Two. This is another Friday mm-hmm. release for the PS4 and the Switch. Boys, I know you're a huge Pixel Junk fan. Do you have any experience with the monster games? These are tower defense games, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Pixel Junk Monsters is awesome. It's the the best tower defense game I've ever played. It's uh you know pretty much widely regarded as as one of the best tower defense games ever made. It's a uh, it's a very difficult game. You know, it's kind of cartoony visuals belie the the challenge that awaits underneath. It's a very very tough game to uh, to kind of uh, get through. But it's uh, it's really fun. The defense mechanics are 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 awesome. The music's great. Uh, just it has that pixel junk charm about it that all of their best games have. So uh, I was excited when I heard that they were making a, a sequel. Kind of uh, came out of left field. Didn't mm-hmm. expect it. But uh, yeah, really excited to see what they've done or what they've changed with Pixel Junk Two, or Pixel Junk Monsters Two. I don't really know a lot about what they've done to this game or, or what the differences are going to be. But, yeah, Pixel Drunk Monsters was just a, a, an incredible game. It was, uh, you know, an early, early PSN game on the PS3. But uh, I spent many, many, many hours playing Pixel Junk Monsters and, and had a ton of fun with it. Awesome. I've actually never played that one, so <laughs> I'll probably it's end up picking game. this up on the Switch. It's, uh, it seems right up my alley. Um, those of you who are fans of physical games, Limited Run is actually uh, doing a physical version of this game, and they're taking pre-orders. So if you want to snag um, you know, an, a disc or a cartridge, it's on PS4 and Switch, uh, it'll run you $39.99. It'll be the complete version, so they're not going to ship it until all the DLC's out. So they're probably aiming for later this year, I assume. I'm not sure. They don't really have a time frame. They're you know, at the mercy of Q Games and when they're able to uh, finish the DLC. So, interested in physical version, go snag that at Limited Run Games. Uh, last game I want to touch on with you guys really One quick. One thing, Frankie, I'm, I'm afraid to cut you off. Before you buy it on the Switch, this game has four-player co-op. Yeah. And I know Pixel Junk Monsters didn't have co-op. This one has up to four-player co-op. So, before you go grab it for the Switch, let's just... Think it over. Maybe we should all get on PS4 and now play cooperatively. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> I mean, just throwing it out there. I mean, I'm more inclined to buy physical games on the Switch just because I don't have a lot of room to work with. So the PS4 mm-hmm. would be more ideal right now. Just, I'm just throwing it out there. Think it over. We'll all think it over. But I think that'd be a pretty cool co-op stream. Just saying. I like where you're going mm. with this. I like it. Yeah. Cool. Maybe Hopefully look- it's online co-op. Oh yeah, we'll, we should probably we should probably we'll, check we'll into do, that we'll first. Check that. We'll check yeah. that. <laughs> good call. Good call. <laughs> cool. So maybe we'll stream that sometime in the next week or two. Who knows? Possibly. That'd be fun. Um. Anyways, the last title I wanted to touch on with you guys really quickly is uh, Bloodstained: Curse of the Moon. 
So, mm-hmm. boys, you know, this is a, a game you backed on Kickstarter. Uh, this is Igarashi, mm-hmm. uh, yes. you know, of course, of uh, Castlevania fame. Um, so this is supposed to be a prequel to uh, Ritual of the Night, which is supposed to be like a 16-bit, you know, throwback, I assume. So this is the 8-bit throwback prequel. Um, where are you yeah. at with this one? Is this something I know you're getting it from backing um, Bloodstained? Are you going to be firing this up this week? Uh, yes, we'll be firing up Bloodstained this week. As a backer, I backed a tier where I'm supposed to get a copy of this game um, as as part of my backing. So hopefully they'll send codes out in a timely manner. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, I'm a, I'm a, a, a huge Castlevania fan, and the moment that Igarashi announced Bloodstained, like I was all over that. I was like, all right. I definitely got to back this. I got. I, I love the Castlevania games, specifically the Symphony of the Night games. Uh, you know, Symphony of the Night, one of the one of the ten best games ever ever made, in my opinion. So, this is you know the guy behind that. He's made a ton of Castlevania games since then, but you know once he split from Konami and started doing his own thing, this looks like the spiritual successor to Castlevania, and maybe the only Castlevania we'll get for a long time. You know, outside of that, whatever the hell they're doing on on iOS or whatever, and nobody wants to to play that. <laughs> <laughs> um so like I, I don't want to play Castlevania with a with a digital D-pad just don't. Anyways, no. so um but yeah, Bloodstained looks awesome and I I didn't even realize really I, I hadn't even thought much about this prequel. I thought maybe it was something that would come out down the line. And they kind of blindsided us er- <laughs> earlier this this uh this month um mm-hmm. when they was like, "Hey, here's the the 8-bit Bloodstained prequel and it's going to be available in a couple weeks for you guys." And I was like, "Whoa. Okay." Cool. And yeah, it, it looks a lot like Castlevania. It looks like an eight bit Castlevania game, which uh, were some of my favorite NES games back in back in the day. So I am really looking forward to playing this game. Hopefully it feels like like an old school Castlevania game. I, I'd be all about that. But uh, but yeah, and hopefully this means that we're not too far away from Bloodstained proper coming out because that's a game I'm really, really curious to get my hands on. Mm, yeah, indeed. Uh, I'm with you. I'm really excited to actually fire this one up. Seems like a good fit for the Switch. So Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be available on Thursday. This one's actually coming to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, 3DS, and Vita. Oh, my. So Vita is actually getting two games this week. Stardew Valley is finally coming on the Vita. So that's... Stardew Valley, big one. Yeah, so Vita's got a couple couple bangers this week, too. So, Mm -hmm. uh, Brent, that's going to do it for our Spotlight games. Uh, So that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Franklin. Much appreciated. All right, guys, let's get into the news. And the big news of the week, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 has finally been revealed. And we can confirm now there will be no campaign. Uh, None whatsoever. I mean, they're going to try to tell some narrative through all the different multiplayer modes and whatnot, a la uh, Titanfall. Uh, Titanfall 1, I'm assuming it'll be something along those lines where you get a narrative at the beginning, at the end, nobody cares about. Uh, but, uh, yeah, a, a report from True Achievements uh, had revealed that on, on Microsoft platforms, anyways, Call of Duty players have a low story percentage uh, or low story participation average. Uh, and I'm assuming this is the same across all platforms, but this is defined as the average percentage of unlocked storyline achievements for gamers that have started the game. The lowest item on the table is 2015's Black Ops 3, averaging 4%. 4%. Wow. So, yeah. Everyone's pissed about it not having campaign. <laughs> Everyone is 4%. That's awesome. Uh, this is uh, compared to the highest entry, Call of Duty 3, which averaged 36%, which is actually pretty decent. But uh, we do know now there will be no campaign. But, you know, we saw, boys, this was a big... Did you, uh, Frankie, Bennett, did either of you guys watch this? Hmm. No? Okay. I just saw, well, I saw a couple clips, but I didn't watch the reveal. Well, I'm going to explain. We'll, we'll break this stuff down because I'm actually going to be curious to get your guys' thoughts on this because this is a different Call of Duty game. This is not the Call of Duty that we know. There are some comparisons here to Overwatch. There are comparisons here to Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. Now, boys, we watched this reveal, and mm-hmm. it was very, very strange. I mean, it was a, a kind of an <laughs> awkward reveal very in, awkward. in a few ways. Very awkward, but... You know, and I wasn't too sure how to feel about it, but man, I went back and watched it again and then did some uh, research, you know, reading on Charlie Intel. They had a lot of great coverage on, on Black mm-hmm. Ops 4. And, you know, watching the video again and just taking what they were showing me, not so much how awkward it was, I'm actually really, really excited for this game, man. Like, really excited for it. And we'll jump into it right now. First of all, multiplayer is 100% boots on the ground. No thrusting, no wall running, none of that jazz. The only thing that we saw that looked remotely kind of weird was the guy with the grappling hook who could pull himself across the map. But that is reserved for one specialist. Not everyone can use that ability. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. So it's going to be boots on the ground. 
Um, uh, some of the big changes that we see here, and now these are changes that I think are really interesting. First of all, players now have 150 health versus 100, so a little bit more health. However, health regeneration does not work the way it always has. You have to actually inject yourself with like an with this health pack or whatever. Yeah, like a med kit or whatever. Like a med kit. And you'll have to do, manually do that. And what that does is it starts to fill your health back up. So, however, if you get shot at all or if you get hit at all during the regen, it stops. And there's a cooldown timer on how often you can use that. So <laughs> gone are the days where you can take a couple of shots and get to cover for like two seconds and you're ready to get back into it. And it's a motion that'll take up a little bit. I think it slows you down a little bit. But like it'll actually... You have to jam in your arm and let the animation play out. So you got to use it strategically. You can't just run out in the open. I mean, you can, but you got to get to cover, heal yourself. So uh, gone are the days of just health regen just automatically kicking in. But the fact that you have more health, you have this health regen stuff, th I thought that was really impressive. Now, the thing that stands out to me, though, is they're, they're bringing back specialists that were in Black Ops 3 and all these specialists. And if you watch this video, you've got a guy with the shield. You've got a guy who has um, sonar uh, things that he can fire into the wall that shows where the enemies are. I mean, there's a lot of strong class uh, uh, elements here, like like you see in Overwatch, that you see in Rainbow Six Siege. Everyone has an important role. It's 5v5 this time, much like Rainbow Six Siege. I mean, there's a lot of team-focused stuff here. This isn't, I mean, hell, even the stats, all it shows is KDR. It doesn't show total kills. There's a lot of emphasis on team play here. Hell, the minimap system is completely different. They had this thing called Fog of War, and with this minimap, what's happening on the entire map is not available to you. So when you see your map, you'll see the area the, 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 the area you're in at the moment, but everything else around you is kind of fogged out. So you can't see what's going on. And when you move around, you only see what's happening in a certain radius around you. And um, the, the way someone shows up on the map is if they shoot. That's the only way they show up on the map. So what this is doing with the fog of war, it's what it's trying to do is trying to force a, or Treyarch's decision behind this is creating a game where communication and teamwork is key. Players have to talk to each other to know what's happening at different locations on the map and where to go to. So this is a very, very different Call of Duty game. And I want to get your guys' thoughts on this stuff because typically we're not a really big Call of Duty group. We don't play a lot of Call of Duty. We'll hop in there and do zombies once in a great while. We were really hoping for a Spec Ops mode because we love co-op stuff, but we didn't see anything on that. But I do want to come back to you guys and talk to you about this new multiplayer layout because for me, the more I watch this, man, the more excited I'm for it because I love team-based stuff. And there's some cool stuff here they're pulling from Overwatch and Rainbow Six Siege. Boys, I'm going to come to you first because you saw the video. Hmm. What was your take from the multiplayer, man? Yeah, it does It does look interesting. It looks like some some cool changes. And yeah, the, the Rainbow Six was, was the first game that I thought of, you know, with the with the specialists and with the, like you said, with the 5v5. And it, you know, it, it seemed in the, in the presentation like they were trying to, like you mentioned, emphasize that this might be a more tactical Call of Duty experience. But... You know, in the uh, they gave a follow up interview with uh, I believe it was Eurogamer, and they and they talked about you know that this is still Call of Duty, this is mm -hmm. still fast paced twitch shooting, this is still you know the heroes and going out and and, and making a difference in the the lone wolves and all that kind of stuff. Like all that still comes into play. They talked a little bit about with the systems that they're creating that they they felt like at least in their play testing that they were kind of creating this I don't know like this organic tactical teamwork experience that just kind of naturally bore itself out based on the mechanics based on the specialists based on like the the you know the multiplayer suite that they had created so i'll be interested to see how that works in in actual execution you know when people are playing the game like are we actually going to see people like trying to emphasize teamwork or i, I that's one of those things where i'll believe it when i see it in mm -hmm. call of duty you know obviously if 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 you know, I jump in there with you and Frankie and Bender or whoever else, and we have a team going in there. Obviously, we we can utilize teamwork, but like just just kind of jumping into the to the natural like Call of Duty experience. Um, I don't know how much of that is going to be there, but I, I do like what I've seen here. The the specialists look like they've got some some cool abilities. You mentioned the grappling hook, the guy that uh, you know sees the enemies on the map is is really cool. Um, mm -hmm. The guy that uh, does that kind of um, you know, he's got that bomb that goes off or whatever it, it yeah. shoots out like a fire wave like that's that's kind of cool so they've got some cool abilities not 100 percent sure how i feel about the health pack thing either 
It's mm-hmm. just like um, it's 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 obviously it's it's an old school like kind of mechanic where you have to use a health pack to regenerate your health. And you know they did mention that with Black Ops Four, they're they're they they're going to continue with the guns up. Uh, motto that they had in the in the previous game where whatever you're doing like your gun is is always up so you know whether you're putting in a yep. health pack whether you're you know whatever you're doing like you can always shoot at an enemy so while you're healing yourself you can shoot at somebody so like mm-hmm. the, all that all that kind of stuff is going to be available to you but man it's like for the last 15 years we've accustomed ourselves to having a shield that regenerates and, and now I've got to go back and, and try to get used to giving myself a health pack so not 100% sure how I feel about that. It's one of those things where I'll have to get in there and see how it feels. Um, but I, I've never been, like, super great at, at Call of Duty multiplayer. So, you know, I, I I don't know that how much time I would actually spend in this particular mode. And obviously this is a huge part of this game. But uh, it's like the the other stuff is, is stuff that probably speaks more to me. But I do like, you know, some of the things that they're talking about here with this. Mm-hmm. And you know, you mentioned something. That depend, you know, play this mode. I think the modes are going to really have a factor in just how important the class system is. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at Rainbow Six Siege, there's no team deathmatch. There's there's objectives. There's stuff you have to carry out, and that's where the classes come into play. Mm-hmm. Obviously, if you go into Call of Duty and play team deathmatch, I, I would I would I wouldn't expect the class system to be very very important there. Obviously, yeah. be beneficial in some ways, but a lot of that stuff t- deathmatch, team deathmatch, that's just run and gun stuff. It's going to be the modes like search and destroy or whatever other ones they come up with. Same with Overwatch. All that stuff is objective based, and that's mm-hmm. where the that's where the classes come in. But yeah. Frankie, I want to pull you in on this uh, real, real, real quick, quick on that too, Brent. They mentioned that the new mode that they're or one of the new modes is that control mode, yes. which supposedly um, combines uh, a couple different ones. I forgot which ones. It's search and destroy and uh, hard point. I think hard are, the, point, are, yep. the, are the two modes that it combines together. So they mentioned like these objective based modes were really like kind of the stuff that they honed in on and, and for the reasons that you talked about. So uh, that's definitely there. Like that was definitely the thought when they were when they were putting all this together. Mm hmm. So Frankie, I want to pull you in on this real quick. I know you, um, you know, you weren't a you're not a huge fan of Call of Duty multiplayer. You know, you have your, your preferences for other games, but hearing about this, just kind of a different take on what you expect from Call of Duty. Where does your interest lie right now? Actually, I, having not watched the stream, but hearing what you're saying about it, that actually sounds really interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what it is. I think I get like a, a little bit of a Battlefield Bad Company vibe. You know, a smaller scale sure. Bad Company mm-hmm. vibe. Um, I love objective based multiplayer, you know, that's, that's a thing that I always flock to when possible. So, you know, hearing that they're putting, you're, they're kind of doubling down on that and you have classes, you know, you mentioned the grapple hook and I just thought of the assassin from lawbreakers. Yes. <laughs> so, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I love grapples. So those are fun, <laughs> mm-hmm. but no, that, uh, that actually sounds like something I might try to get into. Um, you know, like that's, I, Obviously, you know, I didn't quite get into Rainbow Six Siege like I was hoping to, unfortunately. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I assume a Call of Duty game is going to be more accessible to a degree, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's Call of Duty, you know, you're going to hop in right. there and you have a pretty basic idea of what you're doing. So, um, but no, I mean, like all these things like fogging out the map, you know, I feel like even the health pack thing, you know, I think of like Far Cry, you have the guy like, you know, you're digging bullets yep. out of your arm and whatnot. So <laughs> I, I think it's cool. Like that adds a lot of tension, you know, like, you're going to think twice about, you know, oh, I don't know if I should hunker down in this corner and, and, you know, do I have time to heal myself if someone else is going to come up from behind? Like it's going to it's going to force a little more, you know, thinking to, you know, your strategy in that game. And that's to me, that's something I think would be really cool to see in a Call of Duty game. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's definitely something I feel that's been lacking for a long time. Something that makes you kind of a thinking Call of Duty, and you know, I don't know how well that'll go over with the with the community, but I'm intrigued by it. Bender, now you are not a Call of Duty person at all, and when you hear about these types of changes, I know you you're not a Call of Duty player, but you are a team player. You like objective stuff, uh, objective gameplay. What are your thoughts on these changes to Call of Duty? Man, I want to get your thoughts on it. Um. <clears throat> I don't know. Some of this stuff sounds pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Man, s- sounds Speechless. hyped for it. <laughs> Sorry, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, you have failed. <laughs> you couldn't reach Bender, and that's okay. They, um, they but- lost him the second they didn't understand Roman numerals, so... <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he, he was not a big fan of that, but... um, The, uh, he- the other, other thing with the specialist, too, Brent, is... You can only have one per team, just like Rainbow Six. Yep. So you you have to like 
you got to get in there and pick your guy before somebody else does. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's that's good because that's going to force you to learn other characters. That's going to you know not everyone's yeah. going to you know everyone's going to have to learn different roles, and that's mm-hmm. going to go a long ways into the community learning how to play this game. But um, you know we also found out that uh, league play will return. There'll be a league play from Black Ops Two. Uh, you know the esports crowd will love that one. But um, I know I just there's just so much to this game. Uh, weapon updates. Uh, weapons now have 3D tracers. So now if you're getting shot at from some direction, you'll see like a trace around behind the bullets. So you have an idea of where the shots are coming from. So I think that's really cool. So if you got a guy camping, you'll know where the shots are coming from now. <laughs> and so that that's beneficial. And then for the first time in Call of Duty's history, Treyarch is introducing true predicted recoil pattern, a new recoil system in the game. Each gun has its own gameplay and personality. Treyarch says there's a uniqueness as to how a gun tugs back to the center as you keep firing in game. So you're going to have to learn how each weapon fires. There's going to be a different recoil pattern to it. So there's going to be a lot of learning in this Call of Duty game. I'm just I'm just really excited about this class-based Call of Duty where you have to work together as a team. If there's one thing I've always liked about Call of Duty multiplayer is there's the maps are always great. They support the game 100% with, with, with DLC, and just the fact that they're pulling in from two games I really admire, Overwatch and Rainbow Six Siege, just incredibly appealing, dude. Yeah, I'm with you, man. It it, it definitely sounds interesting, and maybe this will be the, the Call of Duty multiplayer that, uh, that you know, I spend a little more time in. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So that's what we got from the multiplayer side of things. Then we got over to the, the zombies. They talked about zombies. And uh, we're getting three maps at the launch of Call of Duty. Three zombie maps. That's pretty substantial compared to previous Call of Duty games. Normally you get one big map, and sometimes you get like a bonus map, like a smaller one for DL, like for a pre-order bonus. But we're going to get three big maps. We're going to get Blood of the Dead, a Voyage of Despair, which looks awesome. It takes place on the Titanic. Mm-hmm. And then uh, is that IX or is that 11 or 10? I don't know my it's Roman numerals. Nine. 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 That's nine. what I meant. Nine. So oh, and then oh, we they, got figured, they figured out Roman numerals for <laughs> it. Or X. Yeah, I'm going to say it's X based on Call of Duty. Uh, but then we got nine. But uh, here's a description from uh, from the press release. Uh, celebrating the 10-year anniversary of the original Call of Duty Zombies, Black Ops 4 also debuts an entirely new and unprecedented Zombies experience that's the biggest day one offering in franchise history with three fully featured zombie experiences at launch. We have nine, Voyager of Despair and Blood of the Dead. With immersive new adventures, a brand new cast of characters, and a nefarious new enemy, Black Ops 4 Zombies will feature the deep gameplay and Easter eggs that the rabid community of fans devours. It also includes the most customizable action to date, new systems for creating and completing community challenges, and social systems designed to connect players. Black Ops 4 also reintroduces difficulty levels and in-game tutorial to onboard new players to the Zombies universe, while giving hardcore players the option of ratcheting up the challenge. Additionally, Zombie Rush is a brand new mode that streamlines the gameplay experience, introducing enticing new challenges to grizzled veterans while creating a whole new tempo of gameplay for newcomers. So now we, we were talking about we need some co-op stuff. You know, if they're not going to do a campaign, we need co-op. We're getting three big maps, three big zombie experiences as opposed to just the one we normally get at launch. Uh, uh, again, Blood of the Dead, I believe, is a is a remake of one of the previous Call of Duty Black Ops games. This is, uh, I think, it's the Jail Session one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that one, that was actually a really good map. I really liked that map. And then Voyage of Despair looked really cool. Like I said, it's on the Titanic. And then Nine, that's the one they opened it with, and you're like in a gladiator arena with like melee weapons. Yeah, dude, it's just it looked like, like the movie Gladiator. And, yeah, yeah. And it looked pretty. And all that kind of stuff. <laughs> And you're taking on like zombies in like this gladiator arena, so it's just kind of a, 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 a just an off the wall, just crazy looking uh, zombie mode. But um, boys, I want to get your thoughts on zombies. Yeah, this is this is more my my speed here. So this is the stuff that I'm really looking forward to with Black Ops Four as it's expanded, you know, uh, zombie suite that they're coming out with. Like you mentioned, there's just some really interesting settings. You know, we span the gamut from ancient gladiator combat to you know, whatever the hell the blood of the dead is. You, you said it's a, maybe the jail. Maybe it's the jail one that they're redoing or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I'm not uh, versed enough in Call of Duty history to get why people were excited about that one or, or what map that that was going back to. So, mm-hmm. um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I'm excited to get into it. And that's, like, this is the stuff that I like to play in Call of Duty is these cooperative experiences. So I, I would mm-hmm. love to get in and play zombies. It's it's one of the reasons I haven't really played a lot of Call of Duty the last few years because we haven't just 
we haven't really been able to just commit ourselves to the to the zombie to the cooperative experience so it's just it's just kind of fallen by the wayside for me but yeah if we're like if we're on board with with black ops 4 and committed to getting in there and trying to do some of the cooperative stuff like the, this looks like it could be a lot of fun so we have the zombies thing. Frankie, any interest in these zombies modes, man? I mean, you hear about this gladiator arena. That sounds, it looks really cool from what they showed in the trailer. Yeah, that, uh, all of that actually sounds really cool. Um, I've, you know, I'm one of those people who kind of did run into the zombie fatigue, but that's my fault. I played mm -hmm. Left 4 Dead for literally a year straight. That's the only game I played for a year straight. <laughs> so, and then of course, like I'm branching off into Dead Island and, you know, Dead Nation, all these other zombie games. So I, I burned myself out on zombies. Um, and I, the only Call of Duty zombies, I know I dabbled with uh, World at War with my brother. I think that was the first game that had the zombies in it. But he was playing that a lot, and you could do split screen, you know, co op. So we played a lot of that. And um, I haven't touched, you know, a zombies mode in Call of Duty since. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, this actually sounds cool. Like, I want to do a map on the Titanic. That just sounds freaking epic. And, mm -hmm. you know, like you're talking about this gladiator arena. <laughs> God. <laughs> Like Ragnarok, that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, it, it looked it looked really really cool. Like I was like when they when they first brought, it, I was like, wait, what? This is going full melee. But then you got to see like these other maps, like you know the the, the Titanic one and then Blood of the um, Blood of the Dead. So a uh, lot of lot of zombie stuff at launch, and then they moved to the strangest revelation of the of this of this stream, and it's the one that everyone's been speculating. But it's the uh, the the Call of Duty Battle Royale mode. And now here's what was weird about it. First of all, they talked about it, and it sounded awesome. We're like, okay, look, we have this huge map that's going to have lo locales from all the Black Ops games. They're like, they're tough. They're going to have different areas from different Black Ops games as the areas you can explore on this map. So it's really cool how they have set up. And then all the characters you can play as are all the characters from the Black Ops games, whether it's from the story or the or the zombie mode or anything like that. Any of the characters you can choose to be your character in game. So that's awesome. That sounds really cool. And they were like, this is. Call of Duty Blackout. And then the screen went black. And we're like, okay, here comes some video. And then they brought my man back on the stage. Is it Mark Lamia? Yeah, Mark Lamia. <laughs> Mark Lamia just comes out and goes, well, that's it. And I was like, whoa. Dude, and it, it, it wasn't just like, this is this is Call of Duty. Dude, the guy was like, this is Blackout. Yeah, he's like, yeah. You got, you got Vondahar up there just going nuts for it. And then it just cuts away without any video. We're just yeah. like. What? It shows us it shows us a logo of blackout. And then Mark Lamia comes out on stage like, "All right, guys, that's it." <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I don't know if that was like kind of like a, a meta when he said, "This is blackout," and then it blacked out, and then they went to you know Mark Lamia. But it was just a a really strange reveal. But I mean, this is obviously going to be a big thing. This is battle royale. We all knew this was coming to Call of Duty. Uh, a couple things about this one though, dude. Um, you know, other than the stuff we talked about, how there's gonna be different locations from Black Ops games. You can play as those characters. We never got like an idea of how many people were going to be actually on the map. I mean, typically mm -hmm. we see a hundred people. That's what's in Fortnite. That's what's in PUBG. And you know, they never reveal that in the stream. However. Uh, one, you know, you gotta love these these dudes on Reddit. Um, so somebody on Something. Reddit, there's a screenshot that you can take from the trailer where they show this map that you can be at. They don't actually show the map; it's just kind of like this, this um, looks like a blueprint of the map, and you can see like mm. little yellow dots that indicate people on there. And somebody actually went through and counted all the yellow dots, and there was 140, which is a lot <laughs> and so uh but again act, you yeah. know treyarch nobody from activision has confirmed the head count of how many people can be in here but 140 people will be a lot of people for a map dude that's 40 more people than what we see on PUBG. but uh boys i want to get your thoughts mm -hmm. on what we what we didn't see but what we did learn about what we can expect from blackout yeah i mean i you know, I like that they're trying to do their their own thing with this, and they're trying to like bring the the history of Black Ops into this. I, you know, I think that that could be a lot of fun. And you know, <laughs> the thing about the not showing uh, or the players or, or talking about this, it just this, this has to be like oh, a, dude, like absolutely, review, that's exactly right? what they're doing. I can, I'm I'm pretty sure at some point during the Sony conference, they are going to show us what Call of Duty Battle Royale looks like. So you know, I. I and I, I said this before when, when we were talking about, you know, the Battle Royale coming to, like, Call of Duty and coming to Battlefield. But when but when these, like, big-time studios get their hands on this genre and they come out with this super-polished product that runs at 60 frames and features, like, Call of Duty-style gunplay, 
<laughs> like th- this is the the time when these other guys like need to start worrying about where this mm-hmm. genre is going to go because Battlefield is going to come out and they're going to do the same thing. They're going to have a battle royale mode that's running at 60 frames with now Battlefield is somebody I could come on. They I could see them coming out and being like, "We've got 200 <laughs> players in our battle royale map or something." Like I could see them doing something crazy like that. But uh yeah, cuz the the interesting thing about this is um uh so Vonderhaar he actually said this to Kotaku. He was like, no, we're not saying how many players. We're working on trying to figure out what the exact right magic number is for a Battle Royale game in the mm-hmm. Black Ops universe. I'll tell you what. If you look at the video that we showed and you play it back, I think you'll find your answer. You'll possibly find your answer if you do mm. some sleuthing. Maybe. End quote. So, not so subtly, David tells us right there, in this video, somewhere, we can parse out how many players could possibly be in Call of Duty's Battle Royale mode. So, like, do I think there's going to be 140? No. I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think there's going to be 140. From from what I was reading, it sounds like they had trouble getting to mm-hmm. 100 players, at least initially. So I don't know if they've figured that out and they, they somehow have, have made a breakthrough and they have even more players now, but I, I was thinking 50 to, to 75, somewhere in that range, would be mm-hmm. where we end up. But, you know, from what, like you said, man, from what people are counting from these dots... It could possibly be up over a hundred. I'd be I'd be very surprised if that comes to be, but uh, it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see you know how this all pans out. But yeah, very very curious to see what this looks like and and how it kind of puts its own mm-hmm. spin on the genre. Now, Frankie, I want to come over to you for battle royale. I know um, I don't think you've even played PUBG yet, have you? Nope. I mean, we got PUBG that comes out, you know, and it's in early access on, on, on Xbox, and you know, and it had issues at launch, but it's 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 gotten better, you know, from what I played it, it feels a lot better, and they got a new map coming out next week, but I want to get your thoughts on Battle Royale. I mean, you haven't jumped into it yet, but uh, you know, the fact that it's coming to Call of Duty, you know, it's going to be polished, you know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, it's going to run very very good. Any, and you mentioned it's a, Call of Duty is an accessible title. Is this like? Do you think Call of Duty is going to be the first one to be like, okay, I'm going to try uh, a battle royale right here with this game? I don't think so. I I still don't see the appeal of battle royale games, and I'm blaming mm-hmm. the, the calling for this because playing that game really turned me off uh, to the whole idea. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know, man. Like I, I'm trying to figure out how to explain it. Um, I'm just blanking. I don't. I don't even know what it is about these games that don't appeal to me. Because when mm-hmm. I first started hearing all the buzz around PUBG, I was like, "This actually sounds pretty cool." And mm-hmm. then, kind of getting in there and playing it, I just don't. It just didn't click with me like I thought it would. I like hearing people talk about it. I like you know all these different you know stories of you know all these people who, oh yeah, yeah I, all I had was a frying pan and you know I was you know was down <laughs> to the, me and this guy and you know he was hunkered down in this room and I snuck upstairs and clocked him in the back of the head and killed him for, their, <clears throat> for to, to win the match. And I'm like, that stuff is cool to hear. But like the, the process of actually playing those games just doesn't appeal to me. I'm not a big, you know, I don't like scavenging for things. I don't want to do any of that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I, and I don't have the, you know, the call of duty, like I don't have the, um, connection to the Black Ops franchise, so you know, like hearing right. all these locations and all these characters, that doesn't mean anything to me personally. So, mm-hmm. um, I, I mean, if people are excited about it, that's great. Um, mm-hmm. I keep thinking that maybe Sony should have sat on Mag for another generation. Oh, like <laughs> that game, that game was actually pretty fun. So, I mean, that would have been yeah. Cool. Mag was way ahead of its time. It really way was ahead of its time. Yeah, so that would have been fun to see them <laughs> rolling out now because that's essentially what this is, right? I mean. I better see another SOCOM before I see Mag 2. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to see a Mag 2, but... <laughs> yeah. So, no, and, and I get it, man. Like I said, it's that was my thinking, too. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about, you know, about Battle Royale. But then I just started playing more and more PUBG. And then when I got my first chicken dinner, I mean, that's when the intensity really, you know, ratchets up. It's towards the end of the match when it's just you and another person or you or two more people in a confined space. It gets really intense, and that's where the excitement is. It also depends where you drop in. I'm more of a stealth player. I like to... You know, I don't like to get in the mix right away. I like to go around scavenge, like you said, get the right weapons, try to find a silencer, and then just methodically pick off my enemies. There's other people, man, they love to just drop 
right into like the most populated area where there's all these weapons and it's yeah. it is a straight war mode like there i mean and there's people that like that and that's that's the excitement that you can get from that so you're, it just depends on how you want to play the game and how you want to approach the map strategically but um no i'm just excited for this because like like the biggest thing is it's going to be a polished battle royale mode it's going to run at 60 frames that's what they're targeting for it and and to have a smooth experience like that with a lot of content that's going to be polished and like boy said man that's going to give uh pubgs and even the fortnites of the world to run for the money because this is call of duty it's one of the biggest franchises in the world and it's bringing in their own take on the biggest genre in the world right now and that's battle royale so it's just uh, uh, two peas in a pod right now. That's going to be a big, a big attraction for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, Bender. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I one of the like I was talking about listening to people's <laughs> stories. Um, it's funny you mentioned the whole dropping into the action thing. It was um sandbox side quests actually. Uh, I know mm -hmm. a couple of those guys are really big on Fortnite, so I think Corey was kind of starting to dabble with it. So you know they're talking strategies, and the one guy was saying, "Dude, just drop into the hot zone, get in there, <laughs> like figure out how the combat works." You know, mm -hmm. like the, that was how he was recommending people play that game is just get into the action, you know, get a mm -hmm. taste of it, figure out how it works, you know, kind of work your way from there. So, mm -hmm. like, listen, like I said, listening to that stuff, listening to the way people talk about these games sounds really cool to me. It's just mm -hmm. I have to figure out how to make that appealing for me to play. Yeah. It's, I mean, my issue with Fortnite, it's not even the combat. Like, I get that. Man, building stuff. I don't want to do any of that in Battle Royale. <laughs> I dig it in the PvP or the PvE portion of things. But man, having to do all I, I, it just it just amazes me watching people who are really good at it play that game. It's just like how do you have the mindset to build this and build this and switch? It's just I, I couldn't I couldn't do it, man. I wouldn't last ten minutes in a Fortnite uh, battle royale mode. But uh, Ben, I want to come to you. I know you uh, aren't you know have any experience with battle royale. Now that we know that Call of Duty is going to have some class based MP, any any interest in trying battle royale in Call of Duty or is Call of Duty just still meh to you? <laughs> um, I'm still probably not gonna pick up this game. Mm -hmm. Just, just no, just for the basic fact that it doesn't have a campaign. It's gonna be just multiplayer. Mm -hmm. I don't play a lot of multiplayer anyway. Even in Destiny, you know, Destiny's a game I love, and I, I like the multiplayer in that game, but it's just not the primary thing I want to do. Right. <clears throat> so for a game to be on multiplayer only, it really doesn't appeal to me. And if I want to try Battle Royale. I can go try like Fortnite for free or something, right? Um, so I'm I'm probably not going to be picking up Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. Now I want to ask you guys one more thing because you just mentioned uh, you know the fact that it's MP only. There's a lot of people talking right now on Twitter and social media and even in the press, you know, wondering can can Activision justify a sixty dollar purchase a sixty dollar price tag on this? Do you guys think a sixty dollar price tag is fair? Uh, I want to get you guys' thoughts, and I'll start with you, boys. You know, Call of Duty without a campaign, do you think – I mean, obviously, I think I think they're going to charge $60 for it. Do you think that's fair? Uh, Yeah. I mean, it, it seems like they're going to have a lot of, of content in here, and, you know, like we talked about at the top of this segment, 4% of, of players completed Black Ops 3. So mm -hmm. uh, clearly the people that, that buy and pay for Call of Duty give zero sh about the the campaign in a, in a Call of Duty game, so mm -hmm. the majority of them are just buying this for the multiplayer to begin with. So um, instead of of spending all that money on the campaigns now, they said you know what, we're gonna try something different this year. We're gonna double down on the multiplayer. We're gonna add in more co op stuff. You know they have the uh, the the solo missions like the um, like the the Rainbow Six training missions or yeah, whatever yeah, for the yep. specialists. Those sound exactly like those. Those mm -hmm. were those were weak as hell in Rainbow Six. They're probably gonna be weak as hell here in Call of Duty. So I don't I don't expect like some some grand. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was just funny over the course of the uh, of the reveal <laughs> how they were trying to like yeah we've got narrative in every inch of this game and just mm -hmm. like dude go sit your ass down like you, you guys <laughs> you guys have got narrative. <laughs> In this game it's, it's just gonna be people going out there shooting each other and with little to no uh idea why we're doing it so mm -hmm. um but uh but yeah i think when all said and done there's gonna be a very robust package here that is going to justify whatever price <laughs> tag they put on it and the call of duty crowd the majority of them they don't care they're gonna buy mm -hmm. this anyway so and see, and I think the sixty dollars is fair because I mean, if you look at games like Rainbow Six Siege, that cost sixty dollars at launch, and that thing went on to do very, very well. Overwatch, no campaign. 
I mean, there's story mixed in here and there, but that is primarily a, a multiplayer game, and nobody nobody battered an eye about yep. paying sixty dollars for that. So I don't uh, this whole story about how they can't they shouldn't charge sixty dollars for this bullshit. These games, this game is going to have a ton of content. It's going to have a ton of maps. It's going to have three zombie maps. It's going to have a battle royale mode. There is sixty dollars worth of, of purchase here. Uh, Frank, plus, you plus get it's, to, it's Call uh, of Duty. Yeah. Even if there wasn't sixty dollars worth of stuff in here, they could slap yeah. whatever price tag they want on this. People are going to buy it. So there's yeah. no way that this is any less than sixty dollars, regardless of what the final package looks like. Mm-hmm. Frank, your thoughts? Uh, I agree with Boyce. I feel like this is maybe the most um, multiplayer complete Call of Duty game out of the gate. And mm-hmm. obviously, if that's what they want to charge for it, they, it has to be, right? Mm-hmm. Like you, you would expect this game to launch with a ton of stuff for you to do for multiplayer. And I think, you know, even looking at the changes that they're making, they're trying to appeal to you know a wider crowd. And if they're able to pull it off, you know, like mm-hmm. someone like me who doesn't typically buy Call of Duty for multiplayer, I'm interested. You know, just based mm-hmm. on everything that you talked about is something I would play. You know, if you guys pick it up when it's something that we kind of work into a weekly rotation, that sounds mm-hmm. like it'd be a lot of fun to me. So um, I'm, I'm actually curious enough to pre-order to get into the beta because I, I want to, you know, get a taste of this game and see if it's something that I want to drop the money on. Mm-hmm. Um, um, the only weird thing that I'm looking at with this is like, th- thinking back to like when Modern Warfare launched, right? Like, that basically reinvented, you know, competitive multiplayer, you know, people kind of, you know, that took the crown from Halo and, you know, going forward, like Call of Duty kind of forged, you know, the path for what, you know, competitive multiplayer gaming is today. But I, it's not, I'm not like pointing it out as a problem. It's just kind of strange to me that you you look at the, the Call of Duty offerings in this game and, you know, we're drawing a lot of comparisons, like they're pulling like what Rainbow Six Siege does and, you know, kind of Overwatch to a degree. Battle Royale is the big thing right now, and they're you know doing their spin on that. Like, I feel like Call of Duty has kind of gone from being the innovative first-person shooter that's setting the bar to getting really good at you know, f- you know, following and kind of hammering in its own take on things. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't, it's just weird to me to see that you know kind of happening with it. You know, we've seen over the years Black Ops. You know, they tried to do the Titanfall thing, had wall running, didn't work out very well. Um, mm-hmm. it's just, it's, it's just, it's strange to me to see them continuing to just go after the latest trend. I miss the days when Call of Duty would come out with something that blew everyone's mind and it was mm-hmm. this, oh man, I have to get in there and experience this, you know, but it's just, it's just weird to me. It's just like a, a thing I noticed when, you know, I was reading all this stuff the other day. I was like, man, just bring back spec ups, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I see what you're saying. And I think what they're doing here is, I mean, the, 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 the gameplay of Call of Duty is, is always going to stay the same, and that's what's always pulled people in is the gameplay. Mm-hmm. The fast, Twitch-based gameplay that you're just constantly running and gunning. I think what they're doing here is they're going to keep that gameplay there, but they're they're tapping in to uh, not just the esports crowd. I mean, there's a lot of esports surrounding Overwatch and Rainbow Six Siege, but they, they see that Rainbow Six Siege, a game that launched with issues, you know, it's over 20 million players now. I mean, there's an audience that wants tactical shooters with the with the popularity of that in Overwatch. They want team-based stuff. And, and Call of Duty is like, hey, look, we need to start implementing this to maybe even reach a bigger audience. We're going to have the same gameplay, but we're tapping into what's really hot right now. And then the fact that they're throwing in a battle royale mode, they're reaching a whole other audience. So now you're going to have the fast gun or the fast gameplay that Call of Duty fans love. And then you're going to also reach out to the tactical audience, and you're also reaching out to the battle royale audience. They're just trying to big drop a bigger net mm-hmm. onto the gaming community, and I think that's what they're going for here. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Like I said, it's just strange to me that it's not. It doesn't feel like something unique to Call of Duty, right? Mm-hmm. And I mean, they, maybe they'll put a unique spin on the battle royale. I mean, we don't know what it entails yet, and maybe they'll make their own spin on it to make it feel fresh, so where they are innovating. I mean, battle royale is obviously battle royale, but they could do a lot of stuff with battle royale to make it different than PUBG and Fortnite. That's true, especially shifting to first person. Yeah, I mean, I I think what it comes down to, Frankie, with your comment there is just. The fact that this is a byproduct of being the biggest video game franchise in the world, basically. At least when it comes to the shooter space. So, uh, it's it's hard to remember now, but once upon a time, like Call of Duty wasn't Call of Duty like it is now. When Call of Duty came out, it was a you know, a, a war shooter, it was it was tagging behind Medal of Honor. Right? It was a it was a game that came out and, you know, was was kind of 
making its way along. Call of Duty 2 came out. That was a, a really cool game that a lot of people got into. Call of Duty 3 was, eh, you know, not, not too much excitement about that. But when Call of Duty 4 came out and they completely changed the the face of of gaming and it and it you know went on to become like the just the one of the biggest titles in in the history of games certainly in the history of shooters once they found the formula that works like that's when you start to lose that innovative edge like once you once you reach the zenith in your in your industry like the, and and it becomes the cash cow that it is for Activision like you don't it, it's hard to go in there and start to mess with the wiring on it at that point like you don't you don't want to you don't want to flub stuff up too much so mm-hmm. now we see little incremental changes here and there things that they try and you know they add in a co-op mode here they try the zombies like there's these different things that they've done over the years to kind of tweak the formula but by and large it's been the same call of duty that we've gotten since modern warfare and you know that's basically by design so now that uh, until somebody like knocks them off their roost, there's, uh, I don't, and I don't, I don't know that there's going to be a lot of like uh, trend setting, leading from the front kind of stuff. So they've already done that, and nobody's shown up to this point that they've been able to dethrone them and, and do what they do better. So, um, you know, with them still staying on top of the heap and now bringing in the biggest genre out there right now with the battle royale, like they're just gonna try and like kind of keep their keep the their rule of the roost there at the top, and and you know, I don't see any reason to believe that that's gonna change anytime soon. Yeah, that's fair, but I don't know. Like I said, it was just a, an observation, but I no, also it's 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 good observation. Yeah I, yeah, I also think though, like now, you know, like looking at them launching with this, I would expect a lot more out of that season pass. You know, you're, you're sixty dollars for a multiplayer only game, fifty dollars for a season mm-hmm. pass. You have three different modes now, so if you can imagine them at least implementing a new blackout map for each map pack like they're going to mm-hmm. surpass what PUBG and Fortnite have to offer by the end of the first year of this game mm-hmm. so yeah I, I totally think that they have they have definitely have the opportunity to uh pull in that crowd you know mm-hmm. tenfold especially you know if they're able to continuously iterate you know with that sweet Activision money oh yeah mm-hmm. so yeah that's that's and that's what people have been waiting to see they've been waiting to see one of these big developers one of these big publishers kick out a, a battle royale mode that you know somebody smaller like Epic or or, or Blue Hole, uh, and you know it's going to be really interesting to see how the Call of Duty uh, uh, Battle Royale mode plays out because this this is big time. This is going to be big this fall. Obviously, we're going to see something from Battlefield this week. I'm sure they'll tease something regarding uh, their Battle Royale mode. But uh, that's that's all we're going to do is talk about Black Ops. Where we still got some other stuff to talk about. We're going to jump into some Nintendo news. Now, this story broke earlier this week, but apparently there is a rumor going around that Retro, they have Metroid Prime fame, are working on a Star Fox racing game. Star Fox Racing. Retro Studios, the Nintendo-owned developer behind Metroid Prime, is making a Star Fox racing game. These rumors have been floating around a gossipy Nintendo fan and writer circles for at least a few weeks now. This is according to Kotaku. Uh, But they've only gone public today suggesting that Retro's new game is called Star Fox Grand Prix. Uh, we've this is again from more from Kotaku. We've heard the same from a source plugged into going ons at Nintendo, and we've also heard from two other sources that the Austin, Texas based Retro had a separate project that went through a rocky development cycle and may in fact be canceled. The person familiar with this Star Fox racing game confirmed many of the details that have been floating around the web today or this week on Reddit and 4chan and Eurogamer and many other places. Grand Prix is said to be a lot like Diddy Kong Racing in that unlike Nintendo's other major racing series, Mario Kart, this game will have a story mode and boss battles. So, Bender, I want to come to you. Your thoughts on Retro making a Star Fox racing game. Please. <laughs> um, I'm a little conflicted on this one. Because on the one hand, I love Retro. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're an awesome development team. Everything they've made has been fantastic. Um, you know, they can really do no wrong in my eyes. On the other hand, this isn't really what I was kind of wanting from them. I was hoping for like, if, if they weren't doing Metroid, I was hoping for like a new IP or something really unique, which I guess this is unique too, but I don't know. Um, I, I do like that. It's, uh, I do like the, the part where they talk about it being like Diddy Kong racing with the, the 
story mode and the battle boss battles because that was something i really liked about diddy kong racing that was something that made the game that game really unique Mm -hmm. um and this this could be the f-zero game that fans have been waiting for without it being the f-zero license Mm -hmm. i mean it 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 still would be a futuristic racing game Um, it could be really cool I mean, if they if they do it right, if they if they have good controls, I hope I would hope they would have like cool weapons and stuff that you can equip. I've always liked futuristic racers like Wipeout and the Extreme G games and uh, stuff like that. Those those games have always been interesting and fun to me. So it, this could be really good, but I mean, I'm I'm a little conflicted because, like I said, I I wasn't expecting this from them. If this is what they're doing, I would have never guessed in a million years, but. <laughs> Uh, it, it could be good though, so I, I'll, I'll have to wait and see and see, uh, wait for a trailer or something or an official announcement. But it, it, it could be interesting. Frankie, I know you're a big fan of Star Fox. What's your thoughts on a Star Fox game molded uh, kind of like Diddy Kong Racing? Uh, I'm actually really excited about this possibility. Just you know, something to wash the taste of Star Fox Zero out of my mouth would be great. <laughs> Anything at this point, I don't care. I'd obviously prefer Star Fox Adventures 2, but, you know, I doubt, I doubt, yeah. unfortunately, I doubt that that's the game they're working on. That would be cool, though. Retro Star Fox Adventures 2. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But, that would be awesome. Yeah, but, I mean, a Star Fox racing game, like, I think that sounds fun. You know, like Bender mentioned, you get the controls down for that. And I, I just, that game would be an amazing time to me. You know, obviously, you don't really need to necessarily make, you know, like a kart racing game, because obviously Mario Kart 8 is uh, still doing very well for them. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, kind of taking to the skies and Star Fox and like a, a story mode and boss battles. Hell yeah. Especially with Retro <laughs> doing it, man. That's just if anyone could could bring Star Fox back from the brink of extinction, I feel like it's Retro. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really excited about this. I can't wait to actually see what this thing is. Boyce, your thoughts on a possible Star Fox game racing game without blue shells to worry about. <laughs> Always nice not to have to worry about those blue shells. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I guess this this could be cool. I've never played Diddy Kong Racing, so I know you guys speak highly of it. But um, so I don't have any any bearing on that. But yeah, to hear a, a Star Fox game that's uh, F Zero mixed with Diddy Kong Racing is uh, you know, it's it it sounds very strange, but it could be cool. Like Bender mentioned, and Retro's kind of knocked out of the park with Metroid Prime and Donkey Kong Country. So mm-hmm. no reason to think that they wouldn't do the same here with the Star Fox game. Um, you know, the the old school Nintendo fan of me would just would think it would, maybe they could make like uh, an actual Star Fox game. That's that's great again. But um, yeah, obviously they have some idea for for whatever this this racing game is going to be. So curious to see what it turns out to be. I'm with Bender though. I would have loved to have seen if Retro was going to come up with like a new IP. I think that would have that would have been great. They could have kind of flexed their creative muscles on that, but. I don't know. They are retro studio, like it's in their name, so I guess they're they're destined to work with existing Nintendo IP for from here on out. And um, yeah, Grand Prix. Uh, I'm sure we'll see it probably at E3 coming up here. I was kind of hoping it'd be Star Fox Zero HD. <laughs> I'm gonna port that one over for you, Frankie, so you can play it on your Switch. Actually, yeah, if they did that and got rid of the motion controls, yeah, Star Fox Zero would be a better game. <laughs> it would. That's true. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens at E three. Man, that's God. We are seriously three weeks away, dude. Coming up. Three weeks. Coming up hot. So that wasn't the only rumor coming out this week. Up next, uh, Pokemon Switch rumors were out in force. They were out in force this week. Uh, first up, there was a leak that began earlier this week when industry insider Emily Rogers stated in a blog post that Pokemon for Nintendo Switch is set to be revealed before the end of May. Uh, she also stated that two versions are planned for release and that games, uh, the gamers will raise a few eyebrows. A mere few hours after Emily's post, a 4chan user uploaded an alleged image of the Pokemon Switch title, confirming that Pokemon Switch will release as two versions. Pokemon Let's Go Eevee Edition and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu Edition. The games will supposedly be remakes of Pokemon Yellow and will feature Pikachu and Eevee as star as the starting Pokemon. Hmm. Uh, who the hell is Eevee? I've never even heard of that name. <laughs> Not a main Eevee's character. A, <laughs> Eevee's a, po- a Pokemon. E- oh, okay. Eevee's a little Fox, like fox yeah. looking character, and she it, it evolves into like f- four, or five, or six different it depends, ones depending on how depends they depends which generation of Pokemon you're into. 
which is none. Originally, mm-hmm. there were three, so I think they added three more with silver and gold. Hmm. Probably mm-hmm. three more with the next set of games. I don't know. Hmm. Well, I'll continue. <laughs> While both games are said to re- are, are said to return players to the Kanto region, Red will apparently not be the main playable character. Instead, he and Blue are set to be the rivals for the new protagonists that players will control. Pokemon will also follow their trainers around the world, and the new Poke Ride function from Pokemon Sun and Moon will allegedly be returning as well. Poke Ride? I don't know if I want to ride that. <laughs> 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 Man, that sounds terrible. Uh, two new Pokemon-related domain names also appeared online, giving fans even more of a reason to believe that these leaks could very well be accurate. The company used to register previous Pokemon websites, CSE Corporate Domains, has acquired UR- URLs for both Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Mm. Given the current rumors, those are the names of both the Pokemon games set to launch later this year. Boys. Your thoughts on this information that we're getting regarding Pokemon this year? Uh, interesting. You know, there's there's two games that I'm really interested for the for the Switch in the future here. One of them is Smash Brothers, which obviously we're going to see coming up at E3. And the other one is Pokemon. So, um, you know, it's a it's a little strange to hear them going back and remaking Yellow. Uh, you know, I I, I kind of thought that when they started with the Switch, maybe we get a clean break, get a a new Pokemon game out there, but for whatever reason, they're they're going back and deciding to remake Yellow, and I just I I just hope it doesn't become too gimmicky because one of the things they're talking about is integrating this with Pokemon Go, uh, you know the the mobile app, and um, maybe you even catch Pokemon like you do on that application. So I just uh, I don't I don't want this to get get too gimmicky. I I would like to see them, you know, try and and move the needle a little bit with Pokemon and, and try something different. This is a very safe franchise. By and large, every game that come out is is basically the same game that it was before, just with incremental improvements and you know new Pokemon that are out there. So I, you know, it, it doesn't sound like we're gonna get something too revolutionary here, just depending on on how they go about this. But as long as it doesn't become too gimmicky, as long as they can and do something that's uh, maybe a little bit innovative, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be on board for it. I, I really like Pokemon. It's it's an addicting game. It's perfect for the Switch. It's gonna be a huge game when it finally comes out on there. So, uh, you know, uh, it, it would have been great to get a new Pokemon with new mechanics and, and, and whatnot. It sounds like we're going to get a remake with, you know, some, some gimmicky stuff. But, you know, I'm, I'm still going to be there to check it out once it releases. Bender, I know you're a seasoned Pokemon veteran. Uh, what's your thoughts on what we heard here? If by seasoned you mean I've played like two hours <laughs> of two of them. Oh, I thought you, <clears throat> I thought you played more than that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Well, may, maybe a little bit more than... He's like, than okay, that, maybe but... 40 hours, but it, it's irrelevant. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I do uh, I, I, I do think this sounds cool from, from everything I've heard. Um, I, I, I would be interested in, in giving Pokemon another shot um, if it comes out on the Switch, when it comes out on the Switch, uh, depending on what they do. Um, I would hope it would be, you know, something with the kind of better visual quality than the previous games and you know more features and stuff so we'll see how how it goes but uh the rumors sound interesting so i, I might I'll, I'll be intrigued to find out more when the when they actually announce it frankie are you looking forward to a pokemon game on your switch i am yes i i'm the, probably the one you're thinking of who's put hundreds of hours into pokemon besides boys you yes yes <laughs> so um, I, I actually, yellow was my first Pokemon game. I got the, uh, that game boy color bundle for Christmas one year. So that was awesome. I actually got the blue and red as well. So, um, however, my whole thing with this is after Emily Rogers and all of her crap leading up to the switch and none of that shit panning out, I don't give a shit <laughs> what she says anymore. I don't believe anything that she has to say. Nothing. Oh my. Look, she told us to focus on, talk about the games coming out at launch for the switch. No. There was one two switch and f-ing Zelda. That's it. So I I don't I don't buy into anything that she has to say anymore. I, I just don't care. Um, and on top of that, you know, when they were talking about this new Pokemon game that they were going to be making, they were saying this is going to be something drastically different. Going back and remaking, you know, the first Game Boy games. That's not drastically different, in my opinion. So I just I. I'm not buying into this rumor. I just I refuse to believe that the, they're going to just remake these these games to bring out on the Switch. I'm also pretty mm. sure that 
given the fact that what the switch is i don't think they can get away with doing the two versions like they have to have one pokemon game you can't do the whole you know this isn't the 3ds this isn't i mean maybe i'll be playing this game walking around the house but i'm not you know this isn't something i'm going to be taking on the go with me a lot um and i just i, I don't know like i i'm pretty convinced that you know when they are going to bring out a new pokemon game it's going to be something totally different not a remake Mm. I have wow. no basis for that at all. But I, like I said, after after all the Emily Rogers stuff last time around, I just I can't take her seriously. I can't. Wow. Wow. OK. Well, then, there <laughs> it is. Frankie Ayler comes out swinging. I dig it. Boys, anything you want to add to that? Uh, No, I mean, you know, I, I understand what Frankie's saying. I, I think we do have some compelling evidence here, though, with the domain name specifically. I think once, you know, those are obviously accredited to the same company that's uh they've, you know, uh, purchased the Pokemon domain names domain names. Man, I can't speak. Domain <laughs> names from in the past. So, you know, I think there is something to that and you know, Pikachu and, and Eevee are, are showing up in together in, in certain uh certain situations recently as well. So I well whatever the case may be, I think we're gonna hear about this sooner rather than later and if they are planning to release this game this year, it's a very quick turnaround from previous Pokemon games and from when they announced this. So if that's the case, it seems like it would have to be a remake if they're just going to turn it around that fast. You know, if they are planning to release this, you know, in the future and spend some more time on it, maybe we get a brand new game. But just if this is indeed a game that's coming out this year, uh, I think odds are it is some kind of a remake, unfortunately. My other thing is that you mentioned we're going to be playing the person a opposite of red and blue so we're basically going to be like the <laughs> nephew of the professor right mm-hmm. we're oh. going to be gary <laughs> <laughs> i love that name gary <laughs> i'm playing as a pokemon named gary <laughs> <laughs> she makes me yeah. think of cade <laughs> right gary Gall, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Gary, glad. <laughs> something <laughs> with a G. Something that starts with a G. Right. <laughs> All right. So moving on from Pokemon, uh, Nintendo has revealed the Mario Tennis Aces ba- beta dates. Players will be able to hit the court starting Friday, June first, at 10 a.m. Eastern time. The beta will end on Sunday, June third, at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Playable characters for the beta include Mario, Bowser, Peach, and Yoshi with single-player and online tournament modes available. Five secret unlockable characters will also be available by gaining points in the beta tournament and advancing through the online stages. Those who play the beta will also receive Mario's trademark dungarees in the main game as a free cosmetic unlock. This game launches on June 22nd. Franklin. Can you repeat (laughs) the beta hours? (laughs) <laughs> no, it begins on Friday, June 1st at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, and it ends on June 3rd at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So that's one A whole that's, weekend? That's not like 10 a.m. to 10.22 a.m.? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you don't get the segments. It is full-on available for two straight days. Wow. We're learning. <laughs> we're learning. <laughs> yeah, it's not that same bullshit where you're like, yeah, we're, we'll we'll be available from you know three a.m. to five a.m. <laughs> and then you know <laughs> noon to one, and then you know twelve eight or 12, uh, eleven p.m. to eleven forty-five. So no, it's it's full on from Friday to Sunday, full access to Mario Tennis Aces beta. Oh, yeah. Bender, where are you at on Mario Tennis Aces? I'm very interested in it. <clears throat> um, I like the Mario Tennis games. I especially love that this one is going to have a story mode because, um, you know, I got way into the story mode on on the Mario Tennis game on Game Boy Advance back in the day. Like, that game was a lot of fun, and it was really cool to have a story to play with it. Um, So I'm I'm looking forward to this. I'm definitely going to check out this beta and see how the game plays. Uh, But, yeah, I I will most likely be picking up Mario Tennis Aces when it comes out. Mm. Boys, you going to jump into Mario Aces? I do like Mario Tennis as well. <laughs> uh played a lot of the uh the 64 one. Um I know the last one that came out was was critically panned on the on the Wii U, so looks like hopefully this one has a chance to return the series to form, but I 
I think tennis games are just fun in general. So to have a uh, a Mario tennis game on the Switch, I think it's going to be a good fit. So I uh, am definitely going to hop in, check out the beta for this, and uh, yeah, if it's good, maybe maybe I'll grab it in June. Franklin, I'm actually really excited about it. Um, I I'm not obviously a big sports fan, but I've always enjoyed the Mario sports games, uh, namely tennis and golf. Um, so I'm I've been excited about you know this game since it was revealed. Um, you know, I, I haven't, I didn't have a Wii U when, uh, was it Mario Tennis Smash? Was that the last one that came out? Or Ultra or something? Ultra, Ultra yeah. Smash? Ultra Smash. Yeah. Ultra, yeah. Ultra. Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, but, uh, I, I, um, I'm excited to check it out. I, I was already sold on the game, but, you know, they're going to give me some, some Mario, what, what, bongos, what, what the hell is it that you get? Some pants? Dungarees. Dungarees. Some dungarees. dungarees. It's his overalls. Yeah, there you go. All right, yeah. So, <laughs> um, Don Bongo. Yeah, that was look. That was a thing. Oh no, that was Donkey Kong. Never mind. Anyways, <laughs> Donkey yeah. Kong. But anyways, uh, I, I, like I said, very excited about it. Looking forward to hopping in there, checking that out. Is it? I assume it's multiplayer, right? So we can, can we do doubles. Well, you're you're assuming I a lot with, think with so. Nintendo. I know, but. It's a look, big assumption there. Look, the beta runs for an uninterrupted weekend. Hmm. Huh? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's. <laughs> I mean, the game definitely has double. So, so I'm, I mean, we can. I'm sure we can play. The question is, mm-hmm. is it online? It's a beta. That is, that is, I, it's yeah, a it's, beta. I imagine. I think it is. Hey, this is Nintendo we're talking about here. All right? <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> we need strange, details. Stranger things have happened. We yeah. need Splatoon details. Works right. I'm pretty sure they said this game is online. It has to be. That's why they're doing a beta. Yeah, why else would they Doubles. have a beta? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. We should do yeah, it. I'm, gl- I'm, I'm really glad you guys are excited. That makes three of us. So, <laughs> um, yeah, you, JD, Ben, and Bender can all go play Mario uh, Mario Tennis Aces or whatever it is. So Wait, that's, I uh, wait. we've, we've done this before. We'll see you there. It's okay. Oh, yeah. we'll see about that. Kiss, kiss of death right there. Remember, <laughs> remember Kirby? Yeah, I do remember yeah. Kirby. I remember getting sold on that because you guys were like, man, we should do this online. Then I buy it, and it doesn't have online. So, no, not listening to you guys ever again on Nintendo stuff. <laughs> uh, and the last bit of Nintendo news, Okami arrives on Switch on August 9th. Okami HD will be yeah. coming to the Switch on August 9th. Go okay. buy it. So now we're going to go from so. Nintendo to something I know Frank he's going to be very, very happy to talk about because he wasn't here last week when it was hinted at. <clears throat> but now it's official, Franklin. Rage 2 is coming to PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Uh, we know that Rage will be released in spring 2019, and it'll be a fully open-world game that uh, Bethesda is describing as a shooter-verse. Revealed in a press release alongside the game's first gameplay trailer that you're seeing here, uh, the game will cover a variety of post-apocalyptic terrain, from lush jungles and treacherous swamps to sun scorched deserts, the game returns to uh, the game returns to the original's focus on both over the top gunplay and vehicle combat with upgradable guns, nanotripe powers, and overdrive, the ability to push your guns beyond their mechanical limits. And here's a here's a brief description of the story. This sounds what you would expect from a rage game. An asteroid has annihilated 80 percent of the Earth's population, and humanity's numbers are dwindling. Ruthless and bloodthirsty gangs roam the open roads, and the tyrannical authority seek to rule with an iron fist. As Walker, the last ranger of the wasteland and a threat to their power, you have been robbed of your home and left for dead. Now you'll have to rage for justice and freedom. With loot, this this is the description. With ludicrous vehicle combat, super-powered first-person mayhem. In an open world full of emergent madness, you will tear across an unforgiving wasteland battling sadistic gangs to find the tools and tech needed to crush the oppressive rule of the authority once and for all. Frankie, this game sounds f***ing nuts. And based on this trailer, are you happy with what you're seeing from Rage 2? So far, dude, f*** yeah. Um, first of all, Avalanche is co-developing this game. <laughs> I love yes. Mad Max. I know a lot of people are wishy-washy on that game, but I loved it. Um, so knowing mm-hmm. that they're at the helm of this game, like seeing what they do with Mad Max makes me more than confident that what they're going to do with Rage 2 is going to kick ass. So I'm mm-hmm. I'm super excited to see that they're, they're the ones who are going to be, I assume, doing the bulk of the development for this game. Um, and even <coughs> like the, the snippets we've seen of the first person stuff, you know, a lot of the uh, 
like the bandits from the first game, like a lot of those kind of, I, I thought they were like smaller boss fights, but you know, you have a lot of these, you know, big ogre type creatures in there that you're going to be fighting again. Dude, those, those were always intense, you know, and, and it looks like, you know, you have the wing stick in there still. That thing was fun. Just whipping that thing around and watching it slice people's heads off. Um, mm -hmm. and, and even like, you know, going into like weapon upgrades, you could do a lot of really cool stuff in that first game. So if they're going to be expanding on a lot of those systems, I can only imagine the kind of crazy <laughs> they're going to figure out that they can do with it. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and it, I always enjoyed the bots too, the little nano bots you could craft. You had like the little spider walker guy, the turret, um, you had the little RC bomber car you could use like rage in my opinion was one of the, like my favorite first person shooters from last generation. I know. A lot of people were disappointed by it, you know, given how long it was in development for. But I, outside of the ending of that game, I loved everything about Rage. It was just, mm -hmm. it's one of those games, I, it's one of my favorite Platinum trophies I have. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> very, very excited to see, uh, you know, this this new game. I don't know, did they, is it multiplayer or is this just a single player? I don't remember hearing anything about multiplayer. I just know it's single player at this time. There might be something, who knows, but I'd be fine with it if it's single player. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, that, that's one thing is I don't know if I'd want to play this competitively. I know Rage had you know a competitive multiplayer, but it was um, like the buggies. It was like a death match with buggies and racing, so mm -hmm. it was it wasn't what you would expect in that game right away. But uh, no, I, I I'm super excited. I'm pissed in a way though because this was on my E3 predictions list, and now thank uh... you, thank you Walmart Canada <laughs> for totally ruining that for me. <laughs> I mean, I know Pete Hines. Look, the Rage Rage account and Pete Hines have been hilarious this whole time. Mm -hmm. But um, I I was kind of bummed, you know, when it leaked and started looking like an obvious thing. I don't know if their their hand was pushed to reveal it early. But I, I according was, to P. Hines, it was not. Yeah, he yeah. Said this was I saw their, that. their plan the whole time, according to him. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sure, but <laughs> <laughs> it just it, it sucked because I I have a list of predictions I've been working on, so I was like I'm scared of this, I guess. So <laughs> that's a bummer, but very very excited. Boys, what did you think of this trailer, dude? This thing is not. I, I, I would ask Bender, but I can definitely tell you this is not a Bender <laughs> joint. So I'm just gonna come to you, boys. Your thoughts on the Rage Two trailer? The trailer is crazy, man. I mean, it's it's a it's a wild it's a wild trailer. It looks it looks like there's gonna be some crazy stuff in this game. I don't have any background with Rage like Frankie has. I've never played Rage, so uh, yeah, this this trailer looks looks bonkers. It looks like uh you know this could definitely be a, a fun game. Um, here and that it's like this big open world shooter that you go around in and <laughs> like I like that they uh they mention these like post apocalyptic environments and the first thing they start with is lush jungles. Like that's <laughs> that's the first thing I think of when I think of post apocalyptic. Um but uh but yeah, looks uh looks nuts, man. And you know, Frankie mentioned Avalanche working on this game and you know, it sounds like they're going to be pretty much developing this game, so what that means to me is that id has their hands in other stuff so i think it's a pretty mm -hmm. safe bet that doom 2 is what they're molding with their with their mitts right now so uh it frees them up to kind of to kind of work <laughs> in that universe and i'd be very surprised if we don't hear something about doom 2 uh in the near future here maybe 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 even at e3 mm. interesting yeah, I thought this trailer was insane. I mean, I watched it. I was like, this is what I would expect from a Rage game. <laughs> and like Frankie mentioned, I mean, Avalanche obviously has experience in a post-apocalyptic world, only this one's far more vibrant than what we saw in Mad Max. And uh, it looks like it's going to be even more violent. So obviously they have the experience with, the, with dealing with this type of setting. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I'm glad it's coming out in the spring, not coming out this fall. <laughs> this fall is packed. So uh, seeing this coming out in the spring, I I'm excited to check this game out. This game looks like it's going to be a hell of a good time, like a lot of fun. And the combat looks great. The vehicle combat. I love how they describe it as ludicrous vehicle combat and pushing weapons beyond their mechanical uh, <laughs> mechanical possibilities. It just sounds sounds insane. So, uh, so very, very cool stuff. None of you played the first Rage? <laughs> I actually talked about it last week. I played a little bit of it, Frankie, but I never played it all the way through it. I didn't play it enough to really even remember it. Uh, I mean, I played a very, very little of it. I, and I think I liked what I played, but I, I can't even remember how much I played. Gotcha. One of the things that, that <clears throat> stood out about that game to me was like the, the way the enemies reacted to you. Um, you know, so like you'd be going through and you would just you're like, there he is. And then, you know, like they'll start kind of ganging up on you. Or, you know, later on in the game, you get the, the crossbow with all these different... Um, arrows you can craft like you could craft these explosive ones and it was cool because you would shoot them you know and they would like start dancing around and just go oh shit. 
button blow up. <laughs> like it was just hilarious the way that you know enemies interacted with you throughout that game. So I hope they carry that stuff into this one too. I'm sure they'll have a lot of stuff that the fans loved about it. So uh, yeah, so hopefully we'll see more from that at E3. The game just looks nuts. That trailer was sweet. Loved the music in that trailer too. It was awesome. Up next, uh, Ubisoft had one of their uh, earning report. Uh, we found out some information about that earnings report. Um, Ubisoft announced during the company's uh, 2017-18 earnings report that we can expect the Division 2, along with the Crew 2, and as well as an unannounced franchise title uh, to all come out before April of next year. Hmm. So we do now know that the Division 2 is due out before April. We know the Crew 2 is due out before April, and an unannounced franchise title. Frankie. What are they hitting at here, man? Please tell me it's Splinter Cell. It's Splinter Cell. Boys, what do you think, man, about getting the Division 2 and the Crew 2 and possibly Splinter Cell before April? It's exciting, man. Um, yeah, my, my money's on Splinter Cell as well, making an appearance at E3 and then coming out, you know, w- within this fiscal year. It's either Splinter Cell or or Assassin's Creed, right? I mean, those are pretty much mm-hmm. our, our only two options. I think Watch for Dogs. Watch Dogs, possibly. It seems a little bit early. Coming off of two, um, does it? What's it been? Two years? Yeah, at the, at the most. I thought it yeah, was. the other one came out in twenty thirteen or no, twenty fourteen. It was two years between one and two. I guess yeah. Hmm. I, mean, I guess that's a possibility as well. So, um, but yeah, my my money's on Splinter Cell, and very interesting what this means for the for the division. The division we can I think expect that to release next March, which is going to put it head to head with EA's Anthem. Mm -hmm. So they are going to be vying for the same audience at the same time. Uh, It's going to be uh, very, very interesting to see how that plays out. And that's going to be just after the big September launch for Destiny 2. Yep. So you're going to have these three big titles that are all very similar in some ways uh, dueling or battling it out in March next year or in the spring next year. That's going to be a very big time for all those games. One of them is going to have to – they're all going to be trying to vie for, for the, the, that particular audience, and it's going to be it's going to be a battle next next spring, dude. Yeah, I'm going to be – better not push out Anthem if it's not ready. Yeah, <laughs> right. Better not. Definitely. Yeah, it's going to be – it's going to be curious to see how many of these games as a service is the industry can sustain and support. Um, cause I mean, obviously the division Anthem destiny, these are all huge time commitments in addition mm-hmm. to everything that goes on with like battlefield and call of duty and Fortnite and PUBG, like all these games that keep people coming back over and over and over for the <laughs> long haul. Like how many of these games can, can there be, how many can this industry support? There can only be one <laughs> <laughs> just saying, oh boy. uh, you know, some people were speculating that um, <clears throat> the unannounced, unannounced title could be Skulls and Bones, but unfortunately, Ubisoft announced that that game has been delayed uh, to give it itself more time to develop and Skulls and Bones to offer players an even more engaging experience. Uh, the game has been uh, delayed and will now release between be released in 2019-2020. So that's been pushed back considerably. <clears throat> that will not be the unannounced franchise title. Um, speaking of delays... We've got a couple more to talk about. Deep Silver delays. <laughs> First up, Metro Exodus and Shenmue 3 have both been delayed until 2019. Frankie, Metro Exodus is now out of August. It's now out of this year. How you feeling about that, man? Sad, but okay. <clears throat> um, you know, Last Light was delayed a few times before it finally came out. Loved mm-hmm. that game. Um, I-, I think you get that thing out of this year. That's fine with me. There's a lot of stuff coming up between now and the end of the year. Obviously, you know, we've, we've got a lot of stuff to look forward to. So it sucks, but at the same time, I didn't want to worry about it dropping, you know, around Spider-Man, you know, mm-hmm. Yakuza Kiwami 2, mm-hmm. Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, all the, all the stuff that's coming out over the next couple of months. So mm-hmm. sucks, but fine with it. Not surprised about Shenmue. <laughs> Not at all. Boy, so are you surprised about Shenmue? <laughs> Hell no. I, there's, there was no way in hell I thought that game was coming out this year. So lo and behold, it's been delayed until 2019, and and we don't seem to be anywhere closer to any kind of release than we were, you know, however many months ago. So you know maybe we see something from this game at E3. Not sure exactly what they're going to show us, um, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, I still feel like this game is really far away. Mm-hmm. And Deep Silver even came out and said that Bio Mutant and Darksiders three release dates are also under evaluation. 
So we're not really sure when these are going to come out. Mm. So a lot of titles here are kind of floating up there because now the fall is, is, is starting to fill out with these major titles. You're starting to see some of these middle tier titles. It's like, well, we'll, <laughs> we'll see you next year. <clears throat> we're not going to complain with the big boys. So room time, <laughs> they're running out of room in the fall is basically what's going on here. Uh, and I won't be surprised if we see a few more delays. That yeah. soccer match is really important. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Man, the the, be- the beginning of next year, though, already starting to fill up a little bit. So we've already got the Division Two and Anthem in there. We just talked about Rage 2 being a spring title, but we don't we don't know how far into spring that is, if it's early spring or late spring. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, there, there's going to be a lot of stuff in that quarter one like there always is, people trying to get in at the end of that fiscal year. So it's not so safe to jump out of the fall and into next year anymore because you're going to be up against a bunch of other heavy hitters. <coughs> yep. Especially, I think Days Gone's coming next year, too. Yeah, day, Days Search Gone like, is, there's is early a ton of stuff. Well. Yep. yep. God, mm. that sucks. I'm already upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's starting to fill up real quick. Uh Oh, another delay to talk about. Uh, 2K <laughs> has delayed the highly anticipated title from one of 2K's biggest franchises, which had been planned for release during the current fiscal year, but is now planned for launch during fiscal 2020 to allow for additional development time. Is this Borderlands 3, you guys? This has to be Borderlands 3, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Boys? Yes. I think that's yep. <laughs> it's, I think it's a, a pretty safe bet that this was Borderlands 3. You know, there was some mention that maybe it was possibly a Bioshock entry. I don't feel like we're close to another entry in that franchise, though. We are close to another entry in Borderlands. You know, they've Gearbox has been talking about it for a long time. It's been a while mm-hmm. since Borderlands 2. Um, it's even been a little while since uh, Battleborn now. So I feel like Borderlands 3 is definitely the game that they're talking about here. No, No question in my mind. Man, I think it's weird that they would de- announce the delay of a game that they haven't announced yet. Right. Like, we don't know the title of it. They're like, you don't know about this game yet, but it's not <laughs> well, coming the, out when you the, thought the it thing was. About, the thing about this stuff is it comes from these earnings calls. So this is not like... This is not like a press release or something that's really, oh, really okay. meant for like mass consumption. It's some journalists that were on a, an earnings call, and these are, you know, this is 2K talking to their investors, so they have to mention this kind of stuff to them, just mm-hmm. as like a, a business I kind see. of thing. Okay, that makes more yeah. sense. <laughs> uh, also, on this earnings call, we learned that Grand Theft Auto V has now sold over 95 million copies. <laughs> that's. It just, 95 million it just copies. It sounds like a made up number. <laughs> it just sounds like you just made that up. <laughs> uh, Frankie, your thoughts on Grand Theft Auto V getting close to 100 million copies sold. It'll probably hit that by the end of the year. I just, it's like Ben said, that just sounds like such a made up number. Like, <laughs> where are we at 60 million? I mean, then again, it is constantly in the top five on NPD, but. Mm-hmm. I feel like we were just at like 65, 70 million back in like November, and now we're at 95. You expect me to believe that Grand Theft Auto V has shipped another 30 million? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But I just, that's, who the f*** keeps buying this game? <laughs> I don't know, dude. Everybody that buys this system. I, I want to know what the attach rate is every month. I, this was, game I was just going to say, systems. I wonder what the attach rate is for GTA V. Jesus. Man. <laughs> 95 million copies. Yep. Actually, no, it might not hit it at the end of the year because once Red Dead comes out, that's what everyone's going to buy. So, uh, yeah. Well, that, then we'll just geez. have two Rockstar games in the top yeah. 10 every every month for the foreseeable yeah. future. <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, buy Red Dead 2, get Grand Theft Auto 5 for five bucks. <laughs> right. Man, that is crazy. Uh, moving along here, uh, just a quick reminder, we mentioned it earlier, but Battlefield 5 will be revealed on May 23rd, that's this Wednesday, uh, there will be a reveal. Um, what time was that, boys? Do you know? 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern on the 23rd. Awesome. So you can look forward to that. We'll find out. Definitely find out the era that this game will take place. We'll probably see some uh, hints about a Battle Royale mode. There's going to be a lot to uh, lot to show, and definitely a campaign. They're going to really push that they have a campaign oh, yeah. for you to play. They are, so. they are going to hammer <laughs> that. You can, be, you can be sure of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and here's some other news that came out this week that's really interesting. But uh, finally, finally, No Man's Sky will receive proper multiplayer when it when it launches on Xbox One. It'll come to all platforms. But there'll be a, a, a 
a proper multiplayer component that will explore and have you doing things such as exploring the infinite universe with your friends or bump into random travelers. As you voyage together, friends will help you stay alive or prey on others to survive. Build bases from tiny shelters to complex colonies that you create as a team and can be seen by the community. Be a pirate or a wingman in epic space battles with friends and foes. Race exocraft across weird alien terrains and create tracks to share online. Hmm. Bender, you going to dust off uh, No Man's Sky and try out this multiplayer stuff? I might, not just for the multiplayer, but just because they've made a lot of updates and changes to this game since I played mm -hmm. it. Um, <clears throat> I never felt like No Man's Sky needed any multiplayer. I, I always enjoyed the the idea of just exploring a vast universe by yourself and you know f discovering creatures and stuff. I never really felt like oh, I wish I had a friend with me here. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I would be willing to try it out at least since that's something that they're adding. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, I, I enjoyed No Man's Sky, and then I'll, you know I'll definitely go back to it at some point and check out all the changes they've made right to be fair we were all here for you while you got your platinum <laughs> yeah we were wasn't that, wasn't that your that was that's your true. podcast game so yeah yeah <laughs> that's we true that was you. awesome <laughs> we were a part of that uh boys so you're gonna jump back into that snooze fest for when the multiplayer drops uh to jump back into it would imply that i had been there to begin with um so i <laughs> I would need to start it at some point. I still haven't haven't played No Man's Sky, but like like Bender mentioned, they've made a ton of updates to this game. The one that they made, you know, a, a year ago or whatever, the Goliath or Titan update, whatever they called it, like that was a huge update that fundamentally changed the game. And it sounds like this one's going to do the same thing here with this uh, next update or whatever they're calling this. So uh, I, mean, I, I do want to experience this game at some point. I I do. You know, like Sean Murray and Hello Games, I I really like the stuff that they've made in the past and. Bender spoken highly of it. Obviously, this has been a very, very polarizing title, but uh, you know, I still have yet to even even try it out. So I need to do that at some point. Do you remember when I streamed Wander? I do. That's No Man's Sky. No, Frankie, boy. you gonna oh, hop no. into? No, 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 <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Dude, do you, do you get stuck on bushes in this game? No. You, you no. almost no. wish you would. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Frankie. You gonna play No Man's Sky and try out the multiplayer? Maybe. Um, it's a game I've always wanted to play. I know Bender, you know, spoke very highly of it. Um, I, when I had started playing it, it was before a server <laughs> wipe, so I didn't want to do too much. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, you know, for me, it's it's kind of hard getting into like these mining resource games. They're not really my thing. Mm -hmm. But like I remember Bender talking about how it is. Just, you know, it's just a really chill atmosphere. You know, it's. You have a couple moments of you know gotta I gotta get to cover because you know this this planet's like this toxicity and you're not you know equipped for that so I, I've always had an interest in playing it but you know seeing what they've done with it over the past couple years and, and the fact that they've stuck with it you know like when that game came out like they got buried by everyone even Sony kicked them under the bus you know mm -hmm. like oh yeah that was you know they shouldn't have over promised and blah 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 but uh, seeing that they've stuck with it and they're trying to deliver on as many of those promises as they can. I think that's very encouraging. So I, I still have my copy of No Man's Sky, and and I've always, like I said, I've wanted to get in there. It's a platinum I wouldn't mind having. So, um, you know, if you guys end up checking it out, obviously I'm just talking to Bender here because you're never gonna play it, and I don't think Boyce is never gonna play it. <laughs> okay, I'm just not banking on Boyce playing it. Second Son has to come first. It has to at this point. It's probably uh, <laughs> it's probably a good bank on your part yes. so if 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 i get a text message from bender at any point that says hey let's check out this no man's sky stuff i'll slot and check it out you know what Ooh. no i i won't i won't no not you won't. don't even <laughs> nope not you going you, to you mean to tell me you don't like joe danger i like oh dude i love joe danger joe danger is joe infinite, danger. infinitely infinitely better than no man's sky infinitely better voice is saying i like hello games and no man's sky and you're like <laughs> you I, love Joe I, Danger. I don't. like Hello Games. I don't like No Man's Sky. Are you sure? I don't Have even you played say it? I, oh yeah, I played it. I, I fell asleep a couple times. It's it's very good. It's very good atmosphere for like sleeping. You turn it on and just lay on the couch and go to sleep. It's awesome. <laughs> I mean, it kept Bender awake on the podcast. So I'm just trying to trigger Bender, okay, you guys? I'm just trying <laughs> to trigger him. Well, that's going to do it for this week's show. Uh, gentlemen, it's awesome. It's always great to have you guys back. I love it when it's the four of us. Uh, a lot of good stuff to talk about this week. Um, no show next week due to the holiday. However, the following week, 
we will be doing a show, our E3 prediction show. A lot of stuff we'll be talking about. I'll have a list that I don't plan to score a single point on. I can't wait. It's always an exciting show. That's my uh, goal so, this year. What's that? That's my goal this year. Oh, really? I'm going I'm going stupid big this year. Just dumb oh, yeah. stuff. That's not going to yeah. happen. Yeah. I'm going, uh, I don't even know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm not even going to try this year. Maybe I'll score a point that way. If I don't try, <laughs> if I stop thinking, if I don't think, I'll probably score a point. So, uh, so you can expect that. Um, so no show next week. There will be we'll, be, we'll be streaming the Tuesday Night Indie Spotlight. We'll have streams going up throughout the week, just no podcast next week due to the holiday. Gentlemen, where can we find you gaming and tweeting? No, stop with the winks. Stop with the winks. Franklin. <laughs> you can find me on Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, Nintendo Switch, Twitter, pretty much anywhere at Viper Strike. Bender. You can follow me on Twitter at Bender underscore guitar. I'm on PlayStation Network and Nintendo Network at me underscore Bender and Xbox Live at me Bender82. Boys. As always, Brent, I'll be not tweeting at Piccolo930. It's my PSN ID. It's where you can find me on Xbox and Switch as well. And then, uh, yeah, the Tuesday Night Indie Spotlight, 10 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe, follow, comment, all that fun stuff. Short Pause Gaming. Boom. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the dude 1979 Xbox Live, the real dude 79 and Nintendo Switch, PlayStation Network, the dude 79 Make sure you visit the website, www.shortpause.com. Follow us on Twitter, at the short pause. Anytime we live stream, we'll always send out a link through Twitter. You can listen to this podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Google Play, and Stitcher. If you really like this podcast, go over to iTunes. Give us a five-star rating. Write out a nice review. It helps our show get exposure, and we really appreciate it. If you're not ready to give us a five-star rating, that's okay. We're, we want to earn it. We don't want any fake ones. Send us an email, podcast at shortpause.com. Any suggestions, criticisms, feedback, uh, games you want us to talk about, Frankie's phone number, whatever, <laughs> let us know, podcast at shortpause.com, or hit us up in the comments on the on the website for this podcast post. You'll see it there. Sound off. We're always checking them. You can also watch this podcast on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. Short Pause Gaming, all those channels. For Mr. Boyce, Mr. Ayler, and Mr. Holt, I'm Brent Felsing. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in two weeks. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.